And this report basically says that he's not fit to stand trial. With an upcoming election looming over Westminster, now is the time for clear, honest answers. I agree. And that's precisely what I'll get. Is he indecisive? Incompetent? That's the Camilla Tomini Show at 9.30 every Sunday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's election channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes and Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise and who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's Tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's Tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria Di Piero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. Good morning to you. It's six o'clock on Saturday, the 23rd of March. Today, the world rallies around the Princess of Wales after the devastating news of her cancer diagnosis. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London. And at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. I'm live in Windsor where the Princess recorded that courageous video message on Wednesday. I'll be bringing you the latest reaction and analysis throughout the morning. 
And well overnight, there's been an outpouring of love for the nation's favourite royal. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak commends Princess Kate's tremendous bravery. And her brother, James, poignantly says, we will climb this mountain with you, Kate. Uh, plus, we'll be looking at the road to recovery for the Princess of Wales as we speak to top doctors and oncologists throughout the morning. And we'll be hearing from England manager Gareth Southgate, who was among the well-wishers last night following the news from the Princess of Wales. England faced Brazil in a friendly at Wembley this evening. Order out there today. Not quite the case of winter returning, but definitely a drop in temperatures. Lots of heavy showers around today as well. Tomorrow, though, looks drier and brighter. Join me later for a full forecast. Good morning to you. I'm Stephen Dixon. And I'm Anne Diamond, and this is Breakfast on GB News. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, heck, what a morning. What a, at six o'clock last night, when we knew something was coming, tuned in, saw Michelle Jubry um, announce the news here on GB News last night. What, it, what a shock. It was a shock. Actually, a real Devastating, shock. Devastating, actually, yeah. I don't know how she did that video. No. I don't know how she did it, because it's one thing to, to be told you've got cancer and to have to deal with it and to have to tell your family, and she went into that, didn't she, about telling the children mm. in an appropriate way and all of that. But then to sit there and... Um, deliver and make it, it. Yeah, to deliver that is very, very difficult. Very difficult. I wonder... I wonder I, I wonder and how many takes I was going to say. I wonder how many takes it took to get to get her through it. She I don't managed know. to keep a straight face. But... She did, but she looked like she was wavering yeah, once she or twice. And she, I've got to be honest, I think she looks pale. She does look I think pale she looks and thin. thin. Mm. Um, but, but if she's she undergoing chemotherapy, then yeah. then she will be. So it was a, it was mm. a shocker last night. Um, John's been in touch already this morning. Hi, John, saying, I'm absolutely stunned. I'm a 52-year-old ex-soldier and I'm weeping. <laughs> Chin up, girl. Our stunningly beautiful princess will be OK. Yes, I mean, that's something that we've all got to mm. hope for and cling on to, and I think anyone watching at the moment who's been through cancer knows that being told, uh, being told you've got cancer is devastating. Um, and sadly for some people, it's, it's really bad news. But in most cases now... It is not the death sentence it used to be at all. Um, I, my best friend, um, at the same age as Kate, um, at about 41, was told that she had cancer and we all thought we were going to lose her. 35 years later, she's going strong. Fit and strong. Brilliant. She's had a tough time, but, my goodness, she's still around. And things have changed a lot in the last 35 Ever years. Ever so, yeah. So Kate will be getting the very best medicine, as it were. Mm. Um, but what she needs now is, is support and love and, we need... and time. Yes, well, it's all about giving her that time. And I think it's worth stressing that we don't want to invade anybody's privacy here this one. It's about reporting on what mm. has been said, but we're not going to over-speculate on what it might be or any, any more detail. You know, they've no. released what they want to it's release. It's not our business now. No, it's not. And she's, you know, she said what she said. But it was a... A shocking moment last night, and if you missed it, this is what happened. I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment. But most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. As I've said to them, I am well 
and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body and spirits. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too, as is the love, support and kindness that has been shown by so many of you. It means so much to us both. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. It just seems so typical of her, actually, that she rounds it off by talking about others. Yes. Actually, I think that's very important, but just the way she did it. I don't know, I just... Huge respect for her, actually. That was not easy for her to do. No. It cannot have been easy at all. Um, but love her. That took a lot of courage to sit there on that bench on her own and deliver a very bleak message. Mm -hmm. um, but as we, we, we must remember, and there will be so many people watching right now who have fought cancer and have, you know, gone on. Gone on one. Yeah, and you can. Mm. Um, and, and that is the main thing to remember. But I think what we're all feeling at the moment is this sort of combined sense of shock. Yeah. And wanting to sort of almost share our shock. Yes, I think so. And, of course, what a blow for the royal family with Catherine and the King both having treatment mm -hmm. for cancer now. What a huge pressure on William and other members of the royal family, actually. And you've got to say, even for Harry and Meghan... Mm -hmm. um, it's did the decent thing They did the night. decent thing. They released a statement saying, um, we wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope they are able to do so privately and in peace. And, you know, whatever you think of them, it's a, it's a good statement. That was the it's right thing, thing to, to say, wasn't it? Good thing yeah. to put out. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk to our Royal Correspondent, Cameron Walker, who's in <laughs> Windsor for us now, where that message was recorded. And, and this is a real shock for the, for the whole family. This is going to affect everyone in the working royal family, isn't it? Yes, Stephen, it certainly will. And, of course, it's been an incredibly difficult three months for the royal family. Three separate cancer diagnoses, plus, of course, the very sad death of Thomas Kingston as well. But we are now just over 12 hours on from that powerful, courageous uh, message to the nation released by the Princess of Wales. And as you've been talking about, there's been a huge outpouring of support for her. GB News viewers and listeners last night as we, we were breaking the news uh, were emailing in saying they were in tears at hearing, hearing the news. I think it's important to stress that the princess remains in good spirits. Uh, and is very much focused on her recovery. It's thought she is uh, still in Windsor at Adelaide Cottage uh, with her family. Of course, it's been a lot for her to process uh, and indeed a lot for her husband, William, as well, whose wife has cancer as well as his father and is going to have to balance his constitutional role as heir apparent and future king as well as looking after his close uh, family. William and Catherine's priority is understandably their three young children, Prince George, only 10, Princess Charlotte, 8, and Louis, 5, turning 6 next month. And they wanted to tell their children at a time that was right for them. Of course, they are now on their Easter break, and that is why it was decided that yesterday, last night, was the right time uh, for the public to be informed of the princess's cancer diagnosis. Of course, as I've said, there's been an outpouring of support, including from His Majesty the King. A spokesperson for him said that he was proud of his beloved daughter-in-law for her courage. James Middleton, uh, Catherine's younger brother, also said, uh, released an Instagram post, a lovely photograph of him and Catherine as children, saying, over the years, we have climbed many mountains together. As a family, we will climb this one with you too. And the Duke and Duchess of Sussex also released a very short statement saying, we wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope they are able to do so privately 
and in peace. Of course, it's been a time of intense interest uh, for the Princess of Wales. Lots of quite horrible conspiracy theories online, huge media scrutiny. And as she said in her statement, she said, we now need some time, space and privacy to complete my treatment. The princess is 42 years old and she will be receiving the best possible medical care. She is not expected, in fact, she's not, and nor is William, all the children, going to be attending the Easter Sunday service inside Windsor Castle next week. That's not happening. They're putting their family first and supporting Catherine at this difficult time. Yes, I mean, I suppose the important thing is now, now that we know, um, th it starts to make sense of, um, of the sort of reaction we've had from Kensington Palace and Buckingham Palace over the last few days. It particularly starts to make sense of why Prince William pulled out of such an important engagement um, last week, was it, doesn't it? Yes, it does, Anne, and I can confirm that the reason that Prince William pulled out so last minute from King Constantine's memorial service here uh, in Windsor a few weeks ago was because of the princess's cancer diagnosis. Of course, the princess, as all of us do, have the right to medical privacy. She has told us that she has been diagnosed with cancer. Kensington Palace are not going to go into any further details of what cancer she has. We know that she is receiving, as she said in her statement there, preventative chemotherapy. She started receiving that uh, at the end of February, so she's been uh, undergoing that and continues to have that for uh, almost a month now. Uh, in terms of how long is she going to be receiving treatment and when are we going to be seeing her back again on public duties, there is no time frame set on that. When she went into her abdominal surgery, Kensington Palace said that she would not be returning till pu to public duties until after Easter. Uh, I suspect that timeline perhaps has changed, but I am getting the sense from talking to people within Kensington Palace that if the princess feels well enough and able, and there's a very specific engagement she's really keen to go to, that's not been ruled out. So there could be sporadic engagements here and there where the princess decides to attend. But as to coming back as a full-time member um, of the royal family, at the moment uh, she is focused very much on recovery uh, and, and her cancer treatment. OK. Cameron, for now, thank you. Back to you a little bit later on. Um, We've talked about the reaction. There's been. Let's just run through uh, some more of those um, responses that there have been. And as, as we've already referred to, Buckingham Palace released a statement saying the King is proud of Catherine for speaking as she did and that both their majesties will continue to offer love and support for the whole family through this difficult time. And then the Prime Minister shared his support for the Waleses, saying, I know I speak for the whole country in wishing her a full and speedy recovery. Leader of the Opposition, Sir Keir Starmer, sends the Princess his best wishes on behalf of the Labour Party and says she will be in thoughts and prayers as she progresses through her treatment. Princess Kate's brother, James Middleton, sh shared... <coughs> sorry, can't say it. ..shared a powerful message on Instagram telling his beloved sister, we will climb this mountain with you, Kate. And GB News spoke to the actress, Dame Joan Collins, as well, last night. Well, I think we're all going to pray for her. And I think that she is going to survive. She's going to come out of this feeling strong. She's young. And um, I think that she was very, very brave to make the announcement herself. Very brave. Very unusual for a royal to do that. And I have great admiration for her as a woman, as a person. Oh, a lovely message from Joan Collins there. Mm. I think everybody is feeling like they want to... If you want to share, please get in touch. GBviews at gbnews.com because I think everybody just feels that they want to say something, they want to mm. reach out. And I think particularly at the moment of Prince William and the, and the, um, the stresses and strains on him... It's a lot on his shoulders. Because, yeah, he, I mean, he lost his grandmother... Um, the Queen, Elizabeth. Uh, then he's, uh, his father's diagnosed with cancer. Now his wife is diagnosed with cancer. And he doesn't have his brother around. One would have hoped, maybe, that um, if times had been different, uh, mm. he would have been able to lean on his brother. Uh, and I just wonder, because Kate will be leaning on him, and he will feel that he has to sort of keep everything going. He has mm. to be the rock at the moment. Um, but who's going to be his rock? I just wonder if you 
How did you get through cancer if you've had to go through the same sort of fight that Kate is now facing? Who was your rock? What would your advice to Prince William be at mm. the moment? How to keep going and how to be that uniting, unifying sort of person without going under yourself? Mm. Yeah, those are GB views at gbnews.com. Um, let's talk to Royal Correspondent Michael Cole, who joins us now. Good to see you, Michael. Um, I wanted your view on... I heard a commentator last night saying, well, this leaves the royal family in a very fragile state. I wondered if that's true, because one thing we've certainly seen uh, since the coronation is members of the royal family, and I'm thinking, of, um, obviously, of, of uh, Princess Anne and also the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, really rallying round, really stepping up to the plate. I wonder if the, if the family is fragile now or if, actually, this is an opportunity for everyone to show their mettle. Yeah, good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Anne. Uh, I think you're absolutely right. They will come together like all good families do, uh, and they will come out of this stronger. Catherine, Princess of Wales, was already the most popular member of the royal family in Poles, and I think her, her popularity is now going to skyrocket because she can wake up this morning knowing that she's put behind her a, a great ordeal it is not easy at all to look into the unblinking eye of a camera and deliver any sort of message. But a message so personal and so important uh, was delivered with great aplomb. Uh, the words were right. The tone was right. Uh, she was calm. Uh, she was dignified. Uh, she reached out to can cancer sufferers everywhere uh, with a message of encouragement. And I'm quite sure that went home even in our own little trio as we're talking this morning. Cancer sufferers know exactly what she's feeling at that moment. And she will also know this morning that she has, as you've already detailed, uh, the goodwill and support of uh, good people around the world. Uh, it's not easy, uh, as Anne was sent saying about Prince William. In fact, I've written a piece tomorrow for the Sunday Express about the burden on his shoulders. I mean, he's, the king's cancer has tapped on his shoulder and reminded him that he may, in due course, have to uh, ascend the throne much earlier than he would have hoped and wished. Uh, and that is a great burden on his shoulders. At the same time, they have to maintain... Uh, Ord uh, an ordinary, happy family life, giving their children uh, the support, uh, the confidence uh, to carry on and live their lives as normally as possible. All families go through this, but this is a unique family, and they have to uh, do so. They have to maintain uh, normality uh, in the spotlight, a spotlight that is never, ever switched off, and that makes things harder. So the only thing we can do, and as you voiced it this morning, is to offer our support in the hope that it is some help uh, as they go ahead with the big ordeal. And the big ordeal, of course, it is recovering uh, soon and completely. And it is possible. People do live many, many years with cancer. Um, and let us hope that in this case uh, it is successful, the treatment, uh, and that we see her returning to the sort of life she wants and the sort of life we want for her. Do you think it's up to us in the media now to stop the pressure? I think uh, there will obviously be benign interest, and there should be benign interest, but I don't, I don't think, uh, particularly in this country, there will be, uh, uh, there will be a distance kept. Uh, it's very much up to the royal family, what they do and what they communicate. Um, I'm wondering whether the alleged breach of her security uh, when she was in the London clinic, uh, the access to her medical details, whether that brought forward uh, the decision to go public, because the last thing they would have wanted was some uh, dreadful uh, website or publication in the United States or anywhere uh, noising abroad uh, the diagnosis that she's had. She delivered this on, on Wednesday, um, and she did it, delivered it extremely well. There we see the London Clinic where this alleged offence took place. But it's interesting to note that nobody's been arrested yet. And if there was a conspiracy to access her records illegally, 
It is a crime and people should be arrested. Um, on this very channel, I have said more than once that I thought the best way of scotching these awful rumours and putting these trolls back in their little caves wherever they live uh, was to make a statement, uh, a short bulletin, medical bulletin, without uh, going into great detail, saying what was uh, what was wrong. I, 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 and I also said it would have been a good idea maybe if uh, she delivered that personally. Well, that was historic. It's never been done before for a royal personage to make it known uh, what uh, the medical condition they are suffering from, and to do it with such great skill and bravery and courage uh, as we witnessed yesterday. Huge shock to everybody. Here we see her in happier times, I think on a visit to the BBC, it looked like at that moment, poor woman. Uh, there she is with her children doing what she does best. It's interesting, her, her, her popularity level around the world in America uh, she has an approval rating of 35%. That means that more 35% more people like her than not like her, and I'm sure that that will be uh, that will be uh, increased. And here we see her with her two sons, uh, a united family, a happy family, and uh, their priority, like every decent parent worldwide, will be the welfare uh, and the peace of mind of their children, so that their children can face it. And I think the reason they brought the uh, this forward. Uh, we're going into the Easter holidays now. They, the last thing they wanted was their children going back to school the next day and being quizzed by their mates in the playground because uh, however well-intentioned children can be, they can also say the wrong thing and even mm. the cruel thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You can just imagine. OK, Michael, really Michael. good to talk mm. to you. Thank you. Um, now we don't want to we we don't want to speculate on things in terms of her health, but get some clarity on perhaps what she told us last night. Um, let's talk to oncologist and former uh, head of the WHO's cancer program, Professor Carol Sakura. Good to see you this morning. Um, first and foremost, what is preventative chemotherapy? We, we call it adjuvant chemotherapy in, the, in, in, in medical terms. Adjuvant just means to help. Uh, so she's had surgery, and now what we do, we try and personalise treatment. When I began nearly 50 years ago in cancer, everybody got the same thing. Now it's very personal. We look at all the data, the pathology, the imaging, uh, the biopsies from the operation, and then even more now, the molecular analysis, looking at genes, gene proteins and other factors in the tumour in a very sophisticated way to predict the risk of it coming back. If the risk is very low, someone may just have surgery. If the risk is higher, we recommend chemotherapy, adjuvant chemotherapy. And that's probably what's happening. You know, we don't want to speculate where it's coming from or anything, but for many different types of cancer, adjuvant chemotherapy it is of proven value. Trials over the last 20 years have really demonstrated benefit. And, of course, the outcomes for everybody is much better if we tailor the treatment to the patient. I suppose this sort of chemotherapy is different for every medical case in front of you. Um, but what form might it take? And does it mean that that word preventive, which is the word she used, um, does that mean that the cancer has physically been removed? That's the most likely situation. And the chemotherapy is there just to prevent it coming back. And so, uh, you know, the, the outcome, the, the likely outlook is really quite good. I mean, you know, without all the details, it's difficult to make any meaningful statement on that. But, you know, chemotherapy is not great to have. There's no doubt that despite the fact that we now control the sickness you get with it and various other side effects, it really tires you out. And, you know, uh, it usually lasts four to six months, depending on the regimen used. So uh, I suspect you'll be out of action for a bit of time, and it's better to take it easy. I tell my patients, don't do anything the day after chemotherapy and take, cancel everything. Don't go to work, just sit at home, watch daytime TV, relax, see people, and, and get plenty of exercise and that's that keeps people going uh, just gentle exercise walking in a park or something like that um how important i know it, it might seem a strange question to ask a, a physician in a sense but how important is is a positive mental attitude in, in making a, very... a recovery from something like this 
It's a very interesting question, Stephen, and there's been a lot of research on that. Do people with a positive attitude do better overall? And it does seem to be the case. People that approach the, 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 whole, the, the whole problem with a positive, uh, you know, determined approach to beat it seem to do better. Uh, the difficulty is we're all different. And, you know, I think what this shows is that the royal family is no different than the rest of us from other families in that they have, you know, the difficulty of a cancer diagnosis, amongst them two, three cancer diagnoses. So I think the approach is to try and build people's confidence in the ability to live. She mentioned the words body, mind and spirit. The body is dealt with by the chemotherapy, but the mind and spirit you have to do with other people and partly on your own, how you react psychologically to knowing that you have a, a potentially life-threatening disease. Yes, it's very interesting, isn't it, that she did say that. Um, she clearly believes it and she's clearly been told it. And in a way, it reminds us all that we play a part in that too by sort of leaving her alone. I know. It's, it, it's, and having a loving family helps tremendously. You can see on the picture there uh, a great family, like so many families, and that's the core of uh, unity and love. And so when you have a crisis, everyone rallies round. Uh, I mean, she's very popular, as you know, and uh, she's got a great manner. I, I like to think that I can judge a patient within 10 seconds of them coming into the room now and know how they're going to react to everything. And uh, I'm really wrong, I feel found in the last few years. It's something you get as you get older as an oncologist. And looking at her, I would say she'd be a great patient to have. Uh, she'll do what she's told in terms of the, the physical drugs and attending and x-rays and all the rest of it. But more importantly, she'll react well to it. She'll react well psychologically. And that really is quite important to get people through, you know, this sort of treatment. Is there a concern when someone has a, a cancer diagnosis at a comparatively young age? Does it mean they're more prone to other forms of cancer or, or can it be a, a, a one-off situation that can be dealt with? It's probably a one-off situation. I mean, she's 42, uh, and that is young for colon cancer or other types of abdominal cancer. It usually occurs in people in their 50s and 60s. Young people tend to handle it better because they're physically fitter. And, you know, exercise does seem to be an important factor in the recovery from cancer. And so they can carry on doing gentle exercise, not sort of running marathons or anything, but just walks and so on. Uh, and I think, you know, it, the, being out in the open, spring's coming hopefully soon, uh, maybe not today, but in the next few days. And that, that encourages people to look positively at the future and how they behave and how they run their lifestyle. And just to emphasise again the fact that she might be um, out of the spotlight for a few more months even, if you were her oncologist, is that what you would be advising her? Knowing that, I mean, her job is a very busy one and she clearly loves it, would you be emphasising to her, don't rush back to work too soon? I would say that. Um, and she's very good at what she does, obviously. That's why we all like her so much. But there's no doubt that, you know, just the connections. I mean, you know, you may have police cars guiding you through, but it's still quite tense getting to different meetings. Better she takes it easy. Maybe one or two engagements that are uh, in the background. But I, I think, you know, taking it easy is an important part of the recovery process. You know, by the autumn, it'll all be over the chemotherapy and be back to normal. Uh, you know, it's especially at the beginning of chemotherapy, the body has to adjust, people adjust in different ways. And it's not just physical adjustment, it's, it's psychological adjustment. So taking it easy is really so important to get down the road to recovery. Professor Carol Sikora, as always, it's really good to talk to you for your expert analysis. Thank you very much indeed. I think that is a reminder there that, I mean, he said by the autumn, probably her chemotherapy will be finished. Mm. Um, but that gives us guidance, I think, that, you know, she could may, maybe well be out of the spotlight for a m much longer time. And we should, nobody should rush her back to work. No, but you see, this is the problem with the modern age that then, you know, a couple of months in, people will be saying, well, we haven't seen her. Mm, what's, she, exactly. what, what's happening? What's mm. going on? Just got to leave them alone mm. now. Don't expect to see her before, you know, the, towards the end of the year. Just leave them be. I mean, what a situation to be in.
actually, and, and, the whole family. Yes, I mean, you can completely understand as well now that um, clearly they wanted to be able to explain the whole situation to the children in an appropriate way, as she said, because can you imagine how frightened those children would be if oh, they got the wrong sort of news in the wrong sort of way, mm. as Michael Cole said earlier, in the school playground with other children coming up and saying, what's wrong with your mummy? Um, they, need, uh, they need to process it themselves. Um, yeah, it's just I do feel sorry that they've... That, that even that they've had to go this far, yeah, though. Yeah, me too. But I guess it's... It, we are in a modern world. People make demands, the online social media situation, then raise, if, if there is a vacuum of information, people, people make it, it up. Yeah, and they really have with some astonishing awful, theories. Some awful things, yeah. actually, so hopefully it puts all that to bed. But do well, get in touch with your thoughts, won't you? And like I was saying earlier, particularly your thoughts, not just for Kate and the children, but, but for Prince William, um, what would your advice be, how to keep going? how to be the rock that that family needs now. He's going to, he's going to need some support mm. now. He's actually going to need support when it's all over. I think that's the point when you sort of go, oh. Yes, yes. Um, so he's going, to, he's going to need that help. So best wishes to them all. Oh, it's an awful situation, but they have got the, the, the love of the nation behind them, My which goodness, hopefully will help. They have. I was watching on the news last night, um, and I was switching over between channels, between um, some foreign channels. Oh, yeah. Everybody talking about it, from Hong Kong News to France 24 to CNN, all of them were talking about Kate. Mm, yeah, well, I'm not surprised. Let's have a look at some of the other headlines heading into the newsroom at 6.32. And overnight, a US official has confirmed that Islamic State were responsible for a shooting at a concert in Moscow on Friday evening. Several gunmen said to have entered the venue and opened fire on the crowd in an attack that Russian authorities say has killed at least 60 people so far and injured more than 100. Donald Trump is set to return to the stock market. Uh, with the former president Trump's media, his alternative to X or Twitter, to become a publicly listed company. Um, he's scrambling for funds to pay his £365 million fraud fine. Putting Truth Social, that's what it's called, on the stock market could generate billions in profit for the 2024 presidential candidate. Ireland's High Court has ruled that Britain is no longer a safe place for asylum seekers because of the threat of deportation to Rwanda. A judge found in favour of two migrants who argued a return to the UK was unlawful as the UK is no longer a safe third country for asylum seekers. I can't imagine too many people being upset about that. No, absolutely. What an extraordinary thing, though, to happen. It, yes. Britain not a no safe longer a safe contract. country, because you might well be taken off to Rwanda. Although well, Ireland... That doesn't look very likely anyway. Well, it doesn't, no. But um, they may have done us a favour, mm. actually. Yes, I know. It could be, couldn't it? Mm. Uh, right. Um, just to brighten your morning a little bit today, just a reminder that you still have time to enter our great British spring giveaway where tech treats and £12,345 in tax-free cash could be yours. Here's how you enter. There's still time to win our giveaway packed with seasonal essentials. First, there's an incredible £12,345 in tax-free cash to be won. Cash to make your bank account bloom. Plus a spring shopping spree with £500 in shopping vouchers to spend in the store of your choice. And finally, a garden gadget package, including a handheld games console, a portable smart speaker and a pizza oven. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,300 £145 in tax free cash. Text GB Win to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 double T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5 pm on Friday, the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. Yeah, best of luck to you. Um, still to come, Aidan's got the sport and he'll tell us how the England team are honouring Princess Catherine.
GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's Tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's Tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria DiPiero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Hello again, it's 6.37. Aidan McGee is here with us with lots of news of the sport. And actually, um, I can't help but ask you about Gareth Southgate, because he, he made a really nice comment, didn't he, about Princess Catherine? Yeah, that's quite correct. So England would have, as is procedural, a press conference prior to a big game at home at Wembley. They had it at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, or sorry, Tottenham Hotspur Training Ground last night at 7 o'clock. Andy Walker, the Director of Communications, just said before questions came in from the media, from the floor, Gareth Southgate, the England manager, would like some, to say something. Let's have a listen now to exactly what he said. Clearly we've just heard about the um, Princess of Wales and we just wanted to send our thoughts and best wishes to her and all of her family. Um, remarkably dignified statement that she gave and uh, yeah we obviously have a very close relationship with the family so uh, we're very upset to hear the news but uh, uh, hopefully everything goes well. I see I really I think that's a really nice thing to say mm. I mean, he comes to such a nice man he always yes. comes across as a nice fella oh he but, is yeah. but the fact that he made he was determined to make that point right at the top. Yes exactly and the, the FA as well have to acknowledge their their position uh, uh, in respect to the royal family, because Prince William is, of course, the chairman of the mm. of the FA. He attends quite a few games as well, and takes a keen in, keen interest in the, in the fortunes of the England side. And a big game tonight against Brazil, of course. Oh yes, but Harry Kane's not going to play, is he? No, he's not. He's got an an ankle problem. He collided with a goalpost uh, last week Ouch. against uh, for, while playing for Bayern Munich against uh, Darmstadt. Uh, so that's an opportunity for Ollie Watkins at Aston Villa. 16 goals, 10 assists this season. Villa have really confounded expectations. Ivan Tony has also got a chance tonight. Right. Eight-month ban, four goals since he came back. That would, if he went to the Euros this summer, so we know that Kane's going to go to the Euros in the summer. But one, only one of the other two, I think, will go alongside him. If, if, if whoever plays tonight has a real chance to stake their claim to get into that uh, that squad. Cobby Maynu, who I saw play at Old Trafford last week. Uh, oh yes, did you enjoy the game? I did. It was, oh. a, it, was it was a magnificent game. It really was. I've given a I've given a program actually to one of our uh, one oh. of our gallery uh, gallery staff. Yeah, Daryl. Yeah, but uh, you should have seen the food. Oh, he sent me pictures oh, of the yes, food. Yes, we were talking about hospitality. I was, yeah, it was, it was, it was outstanding. The menu was very Yeah, good. yeah, I was a bit worried when the server said to me, Lee, he said, uh, do you want your starter? And I said, yeah, OK. I said, what is it? He said, Di Sorono. <laughs> 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 
Well, so no, I said no. Stuff. I said I said no to that one. I just had the salmon on crew instead. And then, oh, nice! <laughs> it was and the chicken supreme. I think it was for the uh, for, for the main. But it was it was outstanding. Yeah, it really was. And then I, I couldn't get a train home in the evening, so I had to book into the presidential suite oh, at, uh, at, at the Hilton. Yeah, I got oh, a, yeah. a, a vastly reduced price though. So that was yeah. uh, yes. That, you sent that, me that, a video of the of the presidential suite. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I made, made it a good, show it off. A good two and a half minute thing, wasn't I? It was very you. very impressive. Funny, you got all this space though. Football, isn't it? Funny, you get all this space though. You still you still just use the same corner you'd probably use anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, are they going to wear that blooming awful shirt tonight? Uh, well, yes, they are, because apart from anything else, Nike paid £400 million over 12 years to, to make England's kit. I can't help thinking that, to some degree, this is manufactured controversy. This is what happens when there's not much else going on in, in a week, uh, an international week. Last time it was the lighting up the arch, wasn't it, uh, in different uh, colours. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And so sometimes there's a little bit of a vacuum within sports uh, media. Social media got a hold of it as well. We should say that... There's such a production cost, Anne, in producing these these shirts that it's not as easy as we might think to just recall it. There was a player last night called Harvey Elliott, Liverpool player who played for England's under-21s. There was speculation last night that because he turned his collar he up... He turned his collar up so you couldn't see the cross. Well, yeah, but he does it for every game. Oh. When, when, uh. when the shirt's got a collar, anyway. OK. Of course. So, look, I mean, it's... I think it will... It will, it will Disappear. They're not going to they do get, anything about it. They get a win tonight and they win against Belgium Monday. Nobody's going to be talking people about it. People are buying them gone. probably because they think they might be a collector's item. Well, I don't know about that because I don't know about that because they sold out on Monday. So oh. this is before it before became a really big story, and I, it leads me to think, Anne, that this isn't a really big thing for football supporters. I mean, Hang on, oh, these I don't shirts know. sold out, even though they're 130 pounds. Well, look, this is this is yeah. this is what it are. So the the adults. Player version is £124.99. You can get a cheaper stadium version. Sorry, not a stadium version. That is the stadium version. A cheaper kind of replica version, which you get in a sport, off the peg in a sports shop, for £65. Children, £119.99 for the upgraded one, and £54.99. Now, you can get a flight to the Euros this summer for cheaper <laughs> than that to, in Germany. Yeah. It's absolutely astonishing. And yet they sold out. They sold out. And also, I should say, on children's clothes, aren't they? you're not supposed to play VAT on that, are you? No, I mean, you don't, no. no. You know, it's absolutely oh, crazy yeah. for that price. And they know, the marketeers, the FA, Nike, they know which ones the kids are going to want. Yeah. Of course they do. Yeah. Oh, but then why bother, why bother with it. PR? Why bother with, market, with smart marketing campaigns when you're selling out? Yeah, yeah. Mm, OK. Aidan, thank you very much indeed. We'll see you a little bit later on. Uh, we've got more to come on um, the Princess of Wales, of course. We're going to be talking to Stephanie Tetchy and Raj Hedu Manku in just a moment. and Co. Weekdays from 6pm. You think this country needs new gas power stations? Apparently, this will all be about trying to get some form of energy security. Rishi Sunak has upset people today with this suggestion, people saying that actually this would do more damage to climate change uh, than it would do good. Where are you on it, Richard? Uh, I'll tell you exactly where. We need a lot more gas power stations and nuclear power stations because quite often the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine. Last week, we imported 16% of all our electricity because we haven't got enough capacity in the UK and we're now totally over-reliant on renewables. Um, the part of the problem is the lack of storage capacity, which mm. the government has finally got round to addressing. I think this as backup is actually quite a sensible idea. But they are not doing anything, as far as I can tell. At the moment, it will be retrofitted to have storage capability, which seems to be utterly bonkers. I mean, anyone who's got solar panels, um, you know, you know very well you're storing up energy. So it's about storage as much as production. And they could have gone, you know, 20 years ago, we could have had nuclear power. You know, we, we could have done more. We haven't looked far enough ahead in the future, and we are in grave danger of making the same mistake. I mean, the other side of this is what is the difference going to be? Blackouts are, you know, they're irritating and... Irritating? It'd be disastrous if well, they would destroy our now. economy. Well, they would be now, but, you know, um, some of us remember three-day weeks and things like that. And, in fact, you know, I grew up thinking that everybody had, you know, at least a couple of days a week when they had to eat off a primer <laughs> stove and things. This is, again, I don't want to harp on, but this is one of the problems in the politics in our country, isn't it? So many politicians, they just think in election cycles, Absolutely. they just think, what can I do and yeah. say to get my own backside re-elected uh, at the next general election? They're not always looking ahead. Uh, actually, politics aside, what is genuinely the best thing for this country?
Uh, 6.45, let's have a look at the front pages for you. And The Guardian has the Princess of Wales, the cancer diagnosis, the news that she is now having chemotherapy. And the Mail quotes Princess Catherine saying, I am well and getting stronger every day. I am going to be OK. The Times has the diagnosis as well on the front page. And then the Mirror, Kate reveals cancer shock. And The Express has the Princess of Wales describing her cancer as a huge shock to her. Um, and to the whole nation, actually, when we yeah, heard it last night. No, absolutely. Let's get a quick update from our Royal Correspondent, Cameron Walker, who's in Windsor. Morning, Cameron. Morning, Stephen. Well, in the last half an hour or so, a member of the public has, has actually laid um, some flowers very kindly for the Princess of Wales outside the gates of Windsor Castle here. It was on Wednesday that the Princess recorded that video message from the grounds of Windsor. Adelaide Cottage is where she lives with her husband, Prince William, and her three young children as well, Prince George, 10, Princess Charlotte, 8, and Prince Louis, 5. And I think the theme of her message was very much wanting to prioritise her children uh, and recover and rest in private as she undergoes that preventative chemotherapy uh, for cancer. There has been a huge outpouring of support for the Princess of Wales since um, her diagnosis. GB News viewers were saying they were in tears in the emails we were receiving last night when we broke uh, the news. Uh, clearly it's been a huge shock for her uh, and it's taken time for her to process it. For Prince William as well, he now has a wife and a father both uh, battling cancer. As I said, the priority is very much for children. The King says the princess is proud... The King says that he is proud of his beloved daughter-in-law for her courage. James Middleton as well, Princess Catherine's younger brother, uh, he has posted a photograph on Instagram of the two of them as children, saying that over the years we have climbed many mountains together. As a family, we will climb this one. Well, the princess, of course, uh, has been subject of intense uh, media and social media scrutiny over the last few months. Lots of unfounded, horrible conspiracy theories online about her. But in her video message, she said, we now need some time, space and privacy to complete that treatment. The princess is 42 years old. She will be receiving the best possible medical care. Uh, she, she and William will not be attending the Easter Sunday service here at St George's Chapel in Windsor next week. They are prioritising their children, their family and, of course, the whole family, extended family, will be uh, supporting Catherine at this time. Hey Cameron, thank you. And I think it's terribly important to remember that while well, people will want to lay flowers down, you know, mm. it's, she's not dying. Um, mm. It is not the death sentence that a cancer diagnosis used to be. And she will get better. I'm, I'm sure she will get better mm. and, and be as strong and go on. Um, so we mustn't sort of be too dismal about it. And I'm sure lots of people watching at the moment have beaten cancer. Mm. We'd love to hear from you, actually. It's just the shock of it. It's the, I think we're all in collective shock, aren't mm. we? Um, let's talk to Royal Broadcaster Ray Haydel Mancou and showbiz reporter Stephanie Tetchy for their take on everything that's going on this morning. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Um, Rafe, I mean, this, I mean the, the, the whole point of this is the shock factor. We're watching it last night when she uttered the, the C word. I couldn't believe it. That's just not what I was expecting at all. No, and it's because, of course, we've always thought of, of the Princess of Wales as, as being in rude health. I mean, she was always such a sporty figure. She never had any health complications in her life apart from having acute morning sickness when she yeah. had her pregnancies. So we were shocked about the abdominal surgery, but then we were reassured at the outset that it wasn't cancerous. Mm. And, of course, it was only with post-operative testing uh, as with the king, actually, in both mm -hmm. cases, that cancer was detected. It just goes to show how important it is, actually, to get screened for these sorts of things. Um, but you know, as you were saying, though, one in two people these days does, uh, unfortunately, end up having cancer of some form, and not a viewer amongst us, I imagine, doesn't know somebody who is some, uh, has been affected by cancer. 1,000 people a day are diagnosed with mm -hmm. cancer, and there are 3 million people in Britain today living with cancer. But as you say, it's not the death sentence it, it mm -hmm. was. 
once no, was. No. Uh, and, of course, even chemotherapy. I mean, chemotherapy is an umbrella term referring to any drug treatment that will actually kill cancer cells. And it can be the old-fashioned way of having an intravenous infusion, but it can also be simply taking tablets at home. And we don't mm. quite yet know what degree on... We don't know what stage of cancer this is. We don't know what type of cancer it is. We don't know what treatment it is she's undergoing, so we can't speculate on all of that. But because she said that she feels well, she's told her children in such positive terms, uh, I think there's every, every reason to be hopeful and optimistic. Mm. You must have been mm. shocked when you heard it too, sir. Yeah, there's always that feeling when you're working at a paper on days like that. It's just that tension that's in the air. And it's been like that over the past few weeks in the newspaper because there's been so much going on for the royals, especially to do with Kate. And so yesterday, when it did come out for me, I just... I kind of just put my focus on her as a mother of three children and realising it wasn't about the edited picture, it wasn't about the conspiracy mm. theories, it was about her need for privacy and finally to put to bed everything that's been going on. And as we've been talking, like, lots of families across the country can relate mm. to having a member of family who's been diagnosed with cancer and each family are facing it in their own way. And I think this is what they now need. They need that peace and that quiet. And hopefully she is on that road to Recovery. What do you make? What did you make of the video itself, Steph? Because Andrew's been in touch. Morning, Andrew says, as um, a person fighting cancer myself, her words at the end of the broadcast meant so much to me. Yeah. When she said, you, you know, you are not alone. It's difficult to feel positive at times, but today I've been given a huge boost of positivity from the princess, and it truly helps to face the future. And this is where I have so much admiration for both Kate and King Charles because they've both spoken about their battle and they've been able to relate to other people who are going through cancer. And I think Kate has this continuous charm where she just remains dignified, you know. Mm. She didn't make no mention of all of the scrutiny that's been going no, she on. Didn't. She just focused on actually the battle in hands and what so many people are facing. So, to be honest, I in thought the video was well done. It was mm. extremely well done. I, I, the King made a big point a couple of weeks ago, didn't he, that the messages he's had really mean something for him. Mm. And, and it must do. And that's what Kate mentioned. It's about her spirit, how she wants to feel mentally, physically and within herself. And that's what you need when you're going through such a battle like this. You need to be gri gripping onto everything that's positive. I have to say, watching that last night, Rafe, just leaves you in, in no surprise at all that she is the most popular royal. Because and it, it is that dignity actually. And that community... She's got a real communication skill as well. Oh, that's right. I mean, I think she spoke magnificently. It was courageous about her own condition, mm -hmm. but it was caring also mm -hmm. about other people. And this was a completely unique and unprecedented announcement, hopefully one that will actually mm -hmm. kill off all the speculation that we've had over the past few weeks mm -hmm. and months. Um, and, you know, it just goes to show how far the monarchy has come. Mm -hmm. You know, when King George VI died from lung cancer, the nation didn't even know he had cancer. Mm -hmm. It was only after the, afterwards that people found out about this. Now, of course, people have been speculating, was this video... Uh, uh, AI. ..prompted by... No, was it, was it prompted by the social media outbreak? Mm. Yeah. I think this announcement was going to come at this stage, but I think the form it took, perhaps, was um, mm. influenced by social media. But we've always known that Her Royal Highness was supposed to come back in, into public life in, in after Easter, mm. by which they meant after the Easter holidays, not after the Easter mm. weekend, around the 17th of April, of, of, of April, so this wasn't un unexpected. But the decision to have this as a to camera as a speech in the garden with flowers behind where people mm. could say, oh, well, actually, this was taken just yeah. now because the daffodils are yeah. in bloom. <clears throat> yeah. I think that was all carefully orchestrated to avoid that sort of speculation because we've never seen a member of the royal family speaking like this. Normally, it will be by press release. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that struck me, and I think a lot of people, is that she did look very pale she and did. she looked vulnerable. She did. And a lot of people have been emailing into GB News saying, I just want to hug her. Yeah. Because she does look vulnerable, and that's not something we're used to with well, Catherine. Well, I think that's why she's been behind closed doors, because there's going to be this big discussion about how she's looking and her just being picked apart. And I think what's really scary is how this world has got to this heightened point of conspiracy theories and mm. just having no respect for people's health and their privacy. And I think that's the longer-term thing that people now need to be looking at and different sectors of the media and their relationship 
with the royals and how we kind of put these new stories out there and where is the limit? Yeah, yeah, uh, and interesting on this as well. I just, and I know it's, in a way, it's, it's stupid, it's superficial. Jeans and a jumper. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just very real, Rafe. Well, that's, 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 I think, the, what uh, Kate brings to the royal family. Is we can all relate to her. She, she grounds the monarchy and she brings an element of normality to the institution. That's why I think she's the global superstar. That's why she's the most popular person in the royal family. You know, in terms of the apparatus of state, the king is the most important mm. for government, mm. for politics and the constitution. But that's the state. In terms of the nation, I would say the Princess of Wales is the greatest asset for the monarchy and our greatest sort of treasure. That's why you're seeing this great outpouring mm. because people really do love her. But I think yeah. while we're all shocked and, and collectively sort of uh, feeling for her, I do think it's terribly important to remember she will beat this. Mm. Oh, yes. Mm. She will beat it. Lots and lots and lots of people do. And I, I just think we need to be upbeat and not too downbeat about it. Well, I think that's where the conversation about cancer is now changing because it's no longer the death sentence it used to be and there's so much treatment available and for luckily for her, she's been blessed to have found it at hopefully an early stage. Yeah. OK. Steph, Rafe, thanks very much indeed. Much more coming up after the weather. A brighter outlook with Bob Solar. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Morning, welcome to your latest weather update from the Met Office for GB News. Pretty chilly out there this morning and a colder feel all weekend. Heavy downpours today for most of us. Tomorrow looks a better bet for a drier and a brighter day. There's some sunshine to be had this morning, but the cloud is bubbling up pretty quickly and we'll see showers become fairly widespread by late morning. Heavy downpours, some hail already in places and further thunderstorms are possible. More snow on the hills across Scotland and even the higher parts of northern England, parts of the Pennines could see further snow showers as well. There will be some sunshine, but there's a brisk and cold wind. These are the top temperatures. Most of this week we've been in the mid-teens across the south, single digits for most of us at best today. Still quite a few of those showers around this evening, still very gusty, particularly so in the far northeast where the showers just keep on coming. More snow on the hills here through the night. Elsewhere it does turn a little bit drier and there'll be some decent clear spells. Again, it will turn pretty chilly, temperatures well down into single figures, but that breeze should stop too much in the way of frost. A cold start though to Sunday, but overall a brighter, drier day tomorrow. Not completely dry, there'll still be a few showers, particularly North Wales, maybe some feeding down through the Cheshire Gap, a few over eastern England and still some over northern Scotland. Still quite blustery along those eastern coasts as well, but elsewhere the wind's lighter, many places will be dry, and with those lighter winds it'll feel just a touch warmer as well. Goodbye. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed boilers. Sponsors of weather on GB News. There's still time to win our giveaway packed with seasonal essentials. First, there's an incredible £12,345 in tax-free cash to be won. Cash to make your bank account bloom. Plus a spring shopping spree with £500 in shopping vouchers to spend in the store of your choice. And finally, a garden gadget package including a handheld games console, a portable smart speaker and a pizza oven. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,300 £145 in tax free cash. Text GB Win to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5 pm on Friday, the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's Tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's Tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say.
So send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good morning to you. It is 7 o'clock on Saturday the 23rd of March. Today the world rallies around the Princess of Wales after the devastating news of her cancer diagnosis. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London and at the time it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful, however tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. I'm live in Windsor where the princess recorded that courageous video message on Wednesday. I'll be bringing you the latest re reports and reaction throughout the morning. Pouring of love for the nation's favourite royal, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak commends Princess Catherine's tremendous bravery and her brother James poignantly says, we will climb this mountain with you, Kate. We're also going to be looking at the road to recovery for the Princess of Wales, talking to top doctors and oncologists throughout the morning. And we'll be hearing from England manager Gareth Southgate, who was among the well-wishers last night following the news from the Princess of Wales. England faced Brazil in a friendly at Wembley this evening. Older out there today, not quite the case of winter returning, but definitely a drop in temperatures. Lots of heavy showers around today as well. Tomorrow, though, looks drier and brighter. Join me later for a full forecast. Morning to you. I'm Stephen Dixon. And I'm Anne Diamond, and this is Breakfast on GB News. Thank uh, you for getting in touch with some yeah, amazing loads stories. Loads and loads. Yeah. I mean, well wishes, and but also, yeah, the stories um, ab about what you've been through. Um, Joyce says, it's really, really sad, but I want to let people know my sister was diagnosed with cancer. Um, as she had an operation and treatment. She lived for 30-plus healthy, cancer-free years until the age of 76, during which time, of course, cancer treatment has yeah. advanced. Absolutely. Dawn, Morning Dawn, says, I had breast cancer when I was 26 and I'm now 65, so there is life after cancer. However, yesterday I had to have tests for a suspected, uh, a suspected return. I got my all clear a few hours before the Princess of Wales announced her cancer. Come on, Kate, you can beat this. Yeah, and even when the news... And, and the news sounds actually quite positive for the... Well, very positive for the Princess of Wales. But even when it isn't, there is hope. Cara says, uh, morning to you, Cara. Ten years ago, I was given two years to live following a cancer diagnosis. Two years on, it had spread and I was given one year to live. But I'm still here mm. and appreciating every moment of life with the love and support of my wonderful family. Sue says, my heart goes out to this lovely young woman. Having to go through this in the eyes of the media must be hard. I had cancer nearly 40 years ago and I'm still here. I think it makes you look at life differently after such a diagnosis. Every day is a bonus. So, oh. Princess Catherine, live life and prosper, as I'm sure you will. Love to you and your family. And, and loads of us uh, feel like we want to do something. To, to help, to show our support. You know, one lady, is, as Cameron was saying, has laid flowers at Windsor Castle this morning. Loads of us have put messages out on Twitter and what have you. What about doing something a bit more practical? Clive has been in touch. Hi, Clive. He says, as a platelet donor, I hope this awful news will help boost the number of donors that help everyone going through chemotherapy. I hope the family given the time and space to get through this battle in peace. But being a platelet donor, I didn't know that was a thing. No, I didn't know that was um, a thing. But that helps people who are going through chemotherapy. So well, but that's something practical we could do. Well, we're going to be talking to quite a few doctors and specialists throughout the morning, so it's something we can ask, actually. Mm. I presume that's just by donating blood. Yes, it will and be. And then they then extract they... the platelets, yeah. and that can be helpful in the fight for others against cancer. Yeah, but it was, I mean, there's no doubt it was a shock last night when um, that cancer diagnosis was revealed. 
This is what the Princess of Wales had to say. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock, and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment. But most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be OK. As I've said to them, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body and spirits. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too as is the love, support and kindness that has been shown by so many of you. It means so much to us both. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. Mm, and already we've heard that those words that she said there at the end mean something to people at home mm. who are fighting the same sort of fight. Let's pop now back to Windsor and uh, join our GB News's royal correspondent, Cameron Walker. We understand, don't we, that um, uh, the Princess filmed that little bit of video on Wednesday. When were you, royal correspondents, first aware that there was something big to be announced? Well, and it was very shortly before the, the public found out, to be honest. Uh, we were giving, given a slight heads up so we can get our heads in order, but we certainly were not aware of what was uh, going to be announced. I think the cancer diagnosis clearly came as a shock to all of us uh, royal correspondents, as it did the public um, at six o'clock. And the Princess of Wales, as she said in her message there, it was, it, it's taken time for her to process and indeed uh, for William, her husband, to process as well. But her priority, very much her three young children, Prince George 10, Princess Charlotte 8 and Prince Louis 5. And the reason the princess decided to announce this uh, news last night was because the three children are now off school. They're on their Easter break. So therefore, they can take time as a family to spend time together without the potential for harassment from various members of the public or uh, other students asking the children questions or other parents and things like that. So that's why uh, they decided to announce it now, so they could protect the children. Uh, clearly, there's been a huge outpouring of support for the Princess of Wales over the last 12 hours or so, 13 hours now since that announcement. One member of the public, as I mentioned earlier, has laid flowers at the gates of Windsor Castle for the princess. She lives at Adelaide Cottage in the grounds of Windsor Castle with Prince William uh, and her three children. Uh, it's obviously taken time to break that news to the children in the right way at a time that was right for them. The King says he is proud of his beloved daughter-in-law for her courage. James Middleton, who is Princess Catherine's uh, younger brother, he posted a photograph of the two of them on Instagram last night, a childhood photograph, and he said, over the years, we have climbed many mountains together 
as a family, we will climb this one with you too. Of course, the Middleton family, very close, very tight-knit family, Carol and Mike, um, Princess Catherine's parents, and indeed James, and Catherine's sister, Pippa, as well, all very close. And the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, from the other side of the Atlantic, have also released a very short statement in which they said, we wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope they are able to do so privately and in peace. Of course, the princess has been has a huge amount of interest in her, really, over the last few months. Horrible conspiracy theories online, a massive uh, media interest. And as she says in her statement there, she says, we need some time, space and privacy to complete treatments. And I think the reason perhaps she decided to release a video message uh, was so, to directly appeal to the public and people online that this is what's happening to me, this is what I'm going through, I really ask you now to leave me alone to recover uh, in private so I can be back fighting fit, undertaking public duties when she's ready to do so. She is 42 years old. She will be receiving the best possible medical care. Um, her and Prince William not expected to be at the Easter Sunday service at St George's Chapel in Windsor behind me next week. She'll be back when she's ready. Uh, it's understood that if she wishes to attend a sporadic engagement here and there, she will do so. But there's not going to be a regular return to duties for some time. For now, she's putting family first and her close family will be, uh, will be supporting her at this difficult time. Hugely unusual, well unprecedented, really, isn't it? The idea of, of this personal video being released. Um, Janice has been in touch this morning, Cameron, saying this poor woman had no choice but to do a video because there's been non-stop speculation and, frankly, she's been hounded. Now, do you think that's... Tr I mean, there's been a lot of speculation, but do you think she was left with no choice? I think it's certainly a modern way of doing things. And as you said, Stephen, it's highly unusual. I think usually if it's a announcement such as this, when it comes to the med med medical uh, problems with the royal family, it's done in a palace statement. Whether she was under pressure to do so, I think perhaps it's only for her and her team to answer. What we do know is that Princess Catherine and Prince William will only do things on their own terms and their communications team take their lead from what's called their principles, so the Prince and Princess of Wales. So she would have chosen to do this uh, and she would have felt it was right to do this, otherwise she wouldn't have done so. I think clearly we saw her apologise for that Mother's Day photograph which she said she had edited to present her family in the best possible light and it was within the best of intentions, but she would have seen the backlash and I think perhaps this was her way um, of directly talking to the public rather than allowing a press officer to speak on her behalf or the media to speak on her behalf, uh, for example. It was, an, it was a personable way um, of doing things and I think that's why she, she chose to do so. Thank you. Yeah, we're sort of past all that now, aren't we? What, the picture stuff? Yeah. Yeah, well, I never They're irrelevant thought... anyway now, it aren't they, all of that? It should never have been an issue in the first place. Mm. It really, really shouldn't. But, no, thankfully, that's all been put to bed. Yeah. Well, we're joined now by former Royal Correspondent for The Sun, Charles Ray, and former Royal Correspondent, Nicholas Owen, who's here with us. Charles, first, if I can come to you, um, were you shocked as everybody else was? Absolutely, not just shocked, but devastated to hear that she is battling cancer. Um, and I just hope all those people who have given her a hard time uh, on social media are totally ashamed of themselves and should crawl back into the hole that they came out of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What a way to... Beautifully. What, yeah, I was going to say, it's the best way to, best way to put it, Charles. Um, because, I mean, she, but she's taken it head on in that sense, hasn't she? The fact that we've not only learnt this awful news, but the fact she's told us herself actually has yeah. a much stronger impact, doesn't it? And, and Stephen, you've got... And Stephen and I, you've got to remember as well, when someone... Uh, you guys will know this as, as well as I do. When someone is told that they've got this dreadful disease, cancer, you need time to take it in. You need time to process it. You need time to sit down and work out what your future's going to be. You also need time to tell your children. And this is why we haven't heard anything that she needed to tell the children who are just 10, 8 and 5. And there is no easy way to tell children 
you know, that mummy is not very well, but mummy was fighting hard and will and will be okay. And so this is the right time, as Cameron's just said, today um, or yesterday was the uh, start of the school holidays. It was the perfect time so they don't get bothered uh, by anybody at all. And we, we won't be seeing them for a while, which, which is a shame. But we, we have to realise that this poor woman is battling, a, you know, a terrible, terrible disease. And I'm pretty sure she will recover. She looked very, very positive. She sounded very, very positive yesterday. And I just hope that everything goes all right. And, you know, I have to say, God bless her. I think we all feel that, absolutely, from the gut, don't we? Absolutely. Um, Nicholas Owen is with us too. Now we know it starts to put everything in perspective a little better, doesn't it? I mean, Prince William suddenly pulling out of the, uh, the, um, the service for King Constantine, things like that. We now begin to empathise with them as an ordinary family going through horrible things. Absolutely, yes. <clears throat> I mean, I'm sitting here, I'm 22 years on from my cancer, and uh, so I, uh, you know, I personally feel it. My, uh, so many people in my own family, among my own friends, and as you say, puts everything into perspective. But, you know, I, I, I want to get some of the sort of... Um, I think the right word is not exactly joy, but listen, this is a great day. She's come out with this news very clearly, as you... So many things that you're beginning to read now. Let's not be down about this. Mm. Uh, she's a young woman, she's 42 years old, she's having... Yes, she's having the best medical care, but, you know, the best medical care is out there for all of us, so many of us, yeah. actually. Uh, so I think that this is tremendous. Yes, it does put things into perspective. We now understand, ah, uh, that's what happened, you know, that's why we didn't hear from her there and why did they play around with the photograph? You know, yeah, OK, all of that in yeah, the... All past. of that... Oh, Matter anymore, yeah. does forward, it? We, forward, we, forward we go. Mm. But it is extraordinary. Uh, I was an um, active as a, a royal correspondent, like Charles, who you were just talking to many years ago now, uh, and things have changed so very, very much, particularly in terms of the media, social media and everything else. And uh, I, I think the royal family realise that they have got to do things in a different way, got to be open, get straight to it, let's talk about all these things. They are just, in the end, like all of us, Fragile human beings. I, I always say, you know, we're such clever people, aren't we? All of us, no matter who you are, all these wonderful brains. But I always think physically we're rather badly designed. You know, there's so many oh. things that can go wrong. <laughs> well, and, absolutely, uh, there are. Um, so, uh, you know, to, to, to get through life at all, it, it's quite a struggle but for But isn't that important? It's important that you said you're 22 years on. Yeah. I mean, that we mustn't get too down about no, no, this. No, 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 no. Because no. she does have a, a terrific family support, um, she is so much loved and she's a fit, young, uh, un until now healthy person. Yes. Um, and she is getting great medical care. There's absolutely no reason to think this is a, this is a, a tragic end of something. No, this no. isn't. No, indeed. And indeed for the king himself. Yes. See, I'm just well, a little, yes, we I'm, mustn't forget. We've been older than him, so uh, I really do identify mm. with what he's... Because uh, that's sort of been pushed slightly into the background, hasn't it? But again, mm. there we are, getting on with it. And uh, he's even been appearing in public and doing various things, hasn't he? Meeting people and so on, not letting it slow him down. Mm. Let's just remember, the latest figures say, I'm sad this about this, something like one in three of the population. I mean, they keep mm. on moving those figures around, but it looks like one in three by the yeah. time you got through life, uh, the chances are you're going to have to deal with this thing one yeah. way or another. This yeah. has been, the, I think, the most terrific boost possible for so many people who are suffering from it at the moment or think they might be or worried about a diagnosis uh, or have got someone in their family that they're very worried about. She could not have done things better. I no. just so admire Yeah, you know, she's reached yeah. out to people who she, she are has. fighting um, it. I mean, what did you make of that, Charles? Because I was... Apart from the shock of, of the initial part of her statement, I have to say I was really touched by the fact she turned it around at the end to support other people. Brilliant. And it's just like the king when he announced he had got um, his cancer, how much help he had given, particularly men, obviously, who went and got themselves checked out. And I think... You know, Catherine saying, you know, you're not you you people who are suffering from cancer, you're not alone. Uh, you know, the, in effect, there will be a, a better day. And I think, uh, you know, that was very very touching. And I think, as as some of your viewers have already um, suggested, that, that, that they've helped her. She has helped them tremendously by what she said at the end of that that video.
Yeah. OK, Charles and Nicholas, uh, for now, thanks for very much thinking. indeed. James has been in touch. He says, hi, my wife is in remission from cervical cancer. It has taken at least 18 months of really hard graft for her to get over it. Prince William will have to be strong through the ups and downs of the treatment. For us, the NHS has been fantastic and they still monitor my wife every four months. Hopefully, she has beaten it. Mm. We talked uh, with Carol Sakura, the oncologist, earlier on about a positive mental attitude. Attitude. And that's so important. And I was talking to you before we came on about... Do you remember Stephen Sutton, mm. that young man who had colon cancer, who remained so positive right up until the very end? He must have been... He's probably been gone eight, nine, ten years out. Was, yeah, there are certain names that he, stick with you. He was, uh, yeah, and I, I used to talk to him, actually, on Twitter. We used to DM before he became sort of very well-known for what he, what he did. And he was a remarkable young man. Um, actually, and I think that positivity is really important, even when you're facing the worst, which it doesn't look like Princess Catherine is. She seems like she's going to make a full recovery, which is wonderful. But Keith has been in touch, who says, um, I'm suffering from terminal blood cancer and going through chemo seven days a week. Wow, that it's, sounds serious. Yeah, it? it's hard, but you cannot give up even on your worst days where there's life, there's hope. Thinking of you, Keith, as well, and hopefully you feel that support from the Princess of Wales as well as she's thinking of people like you as well as she's dealing with what she's going through. Um, you've got to stay positive as best you can. Yeah, but when you think of it, she's had major surgery. She may well have had a second surgery because they often go back to make sure that they've mm. got everything... ..once they know it's cancer or whatever. Um, and if she is already taking... She said she's at the beginning of her chemotherapy. We don't know how how intrusive that horrible chemotherapy might be for her. But it's actually very soon for her even to be sitting on a bench doing a piece to camera mm. for us, isn't it? It really is very soon. Yeah. Well, let's hope she's now... She's got that over somewhere. and done with. Well, she's got, it, she's got it done. Yeah. She needs to just rest up and not worry about anything else. And we need to not expect to see her for months now. Exactly. Just leave them be. And if you've got any special advice that you would give to Prince William, for instance, how to stay strong, how to be the rock, even though you need a rock yourself to lean on uh, during those times, I'd love to hear what your story is, because he has got a lot to get through too. Yeah, he has. At 21 minutes past seven, let's have a look at some of the other stories coming into the newsroom. And overnight, a US official has confirmed Islamic State were responsible for a shooting at a concert in Moscow last night. Several gunmen said to have entered the venue and opened fire in an attack Russian authorities say has killed at least 60 people and injured more than 100. Donald Trump is set to return to the stock market with the former president's social media platform, Truth Social, to become a publicly listed company. Now, President Trump um, is scrambling, apparently, to pay his £365 million fraud fine. Putting Truth Social on the stock market could generate billions in profit for him. Ireland's High Court has ruled that Britain is no longer a safe place for asylum seekers, and that's because of the threat of deportation to Rwanda. A judge found in favour of two migrants who argued a return to the UK was unlawful, as the UK is no longer a safe third country for asylum seekers. I should say, last night, yeah. lots of people on social media were saying to me, You're very sorry about all this news and what have you, um, but you know, she needs her privacy, so I hope you're not going to be reporting on it tomorrow. And I didn't get a chance to reply to everybody and all the rest of it, but... Reporting the news is very different from, from speculation in, and mm, intrusion. You've got to... It's, it's not something you can ignore. You have to, you know, in this business, you have to... It's what everybody is talking about, and therefore you have to report on it and bring people the latest as we have it. But as Anne says, what is crucial is not to speculate, is not to try and uncover information that they don't want to share because it's, it's about her private health and a private family matter. Um, so there's a difference between the two. So for those of you who think, well, why aren't you just leaving it alone? 
Well, because it really is the stuff that everyone's talking about today. Yeah, and I think we need to share. I think when you... I think the nation went through a sort of shock mm. last night. Yes, yeah, You yeah. could almost feel the sort of gasp from everybody. Um, and people need to talk about that sort of thing. And you need to share your stories too, because... And I think that's what the princess wanted when she said at the end, you know, you are not alone. Mm. That's a very important message. Yeah, it is. So keep your stories coming through and we'll support you um, and, and that, will, that will help support others as well. It's all a big sort of warm circle of support, if you so, like. Yes. GBviews at gbnews.com. Let's get the check on the weather for you this morning. It's a bit cold. Here's Alex. A brighter outlook with Bob Solar. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Morning, welcome to your latest weather update from the Met Office for GB News. Pretty chilly out there this morning and a colder feel all weekend. Heavy downpours today for most of us. Tomorrow looks a better bet for a drier and a brighter day. There's some sunshine to be had this morning, but the cloud is bubbling up pretty quickly and we'll see showers become fairly widespread by late morning. Heavy downpours, some hail already in places and further thunderstorms are possible. More snow on the hills across Scotland and even the high parts of northern England, parts of the Pennines could see further snow showers as well. There will be some sunshine, but there's a brisk and cold wind. These are the top temperatures. Most of this week we've been in the mid-teens across the south, single digits for most of us at best today. Still quite a few of those showers around this evening, still very gusty, particularly so in the far northeast where the showers just keep on coming. More snow on the hills here through the night. Elsewhere it does turn a little bit drier and there'll be some decent clear spells. Again, it will turn pretty chilly, temperatures well down into single figures, but that breeze should stop too much in the way of frost. A cold start, though, to Sunday, but overall a brighter, drier day tomorrow. Not completely dry, there'll still be a few showers, particularly North Wales, maybe some feeding down through the Cheshire Gap, a few over eastern England and still some over northern Scotland. Still quite blustery along those eastern coasts as well, but elsewhere the wind's lighter, many places will be dry, and with those lighter winds it'll feel just a touch warmer as well. Goodbye. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. Well, it might not feel like it, but spring is on the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> it didn't feel like um, it this morning. No, and our great British spring giveaway is here with tech treats and £12,345 in tax free cash that could all be yours. Here's how. There's still time to win our giveaway packed with seasonal essentials. First, there's an incredible £12,345 in tax-free cash to be won. Cash to make your bank account bloom. Plus a spring shopping spree with £500 in shopping vouchers to spend in the store of your choice. And finally, a garden gadget package including a handheld games console, a portable smart speaker and a pizza oven. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,300 £145 in tax free cash. Text GB Win to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 double T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5 pm on Friday, the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. Yes, and a very good luck with that. Do hang on with us. Still to come, we're going to be speaking to an NHS doctor for a sort of medical insight into what the Princess of Wales may be going through. That's all coming up. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Yeah, well, when it comes to fish and chips, we all know they're a part of a British tradition and the Golden Chippy is, is an award-winning uh, restaurant and for years they've been serving the community here in Greenwich and even today on a Sunday, they are fully packed today. But this is the issue. Here we've got a mural and which says a great British meal. Residents who live in this area who've complained uh, to Greenwich Council who say it's inappropriate uh, considering it's in a conservation area. Here's what some of the local people we've been speaking to had to say. 
what's wrong with it? It looks all right, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Look at some of the other graffiti they've got around in Greenwich. They don't want to take that down, do they? But when you've got something like this, it's half decent, they don't want to remove it. Fantastic artwork. I really like it. Reminds me of Banksy. Well, those are the views here from people who live in this local area. But I'm kindly joined by Chris, the owner. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. You've been here for 20 years now. Um, tell, tell me how this issue has come up. They take pictures. It's only been up for about a month. And uh, it's been very, very popular. I don't want to believe that any of the locals are uh, complaining that this is uh, too loud or anything like that. They say... It's, it needs planning permission. How a little thing like this needs planning permission, I don't know. Are you working with an artist in this local area? I've got a local uh, guy that uh, does uh, murals, so he said, uh, would you like me to do something for you? I said, yes, why not? I said, make sure you leave a bit of space for people to stand there so they can uh, take some selfies or pictures or whatever they want to do from Walden Chippy. And it's been extremely popular, and not one person has come to me and said, that looks terrible. So I cannot imagine the person that complained about this. I think it's just cancelled. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Oh, what a moment it was last night. And it was that, as we keep saying, sort of a, a collective moment of shock. And it really was, I think, last night at 6 o'clock. It was not what I was expecting. I thought we were going to be told because of all the speculation as to exactly what the problem had been. Yeah. Not what we eventually found out. No, I don't. We, I, we weren't prepared for that at all, were we? No, no. But and people have different ways of dealing with it as well. Um, Sally's been in touch, Morning Sally, saying, thank you for saying don't lay flowers. Um, she said, when I had cancer 22 years ago, it was very distressing when people sent me lilies. Well, <laughs> people do things in different ways, don't they? I just, with that, you know, I just think you need to go, well, people are showing their support in whatever way they mm. think they can. They're showing love, aren't they? Yeah. So, I mean, I know I, I was a bit like that when uh, Cameron was showing us the flowers left at Windsor Castle. She hasn't passed away. No, no. Um, however, if it's how people can show their support, then you've got to let them do it. All right, how about this one then from Christopher? Morning, Christopher. Um, he said, Kate's strong power of mind will help her get better. I was diagnosed with testicular cancer age 28 and the doctor said there was a good chance of a full recovery and I told him, that's me, I will be one of the survivors. So through the power of a powerful mind and belief, I recovered. I've gone on to have two beautiful children. My career thrived and I'm now 60 and still physically fit. Yeah, good on you. Brilliant. Good on you. Um, now, let's talk to uh, NHS doctor, uh, Dr Frankie Jackson-Spence, who joins us now. Good morning Good to morning. you. Good morning. How important is it um, for Catherine to show her support, in a way? Because a lot of what you deal with, with with people when they're going through something which may be cancer, is you've, you've got to look not only at the medical side, I guess, but also at support structure and everything else for these patients. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's you know, something that affects people's entire lives. It's not just how the cancer and the symptoms of the cancer or indeed the side effects of the treatment may make them feel. It's also the disruption to your normal life, you know, having to go into this new environment um, and have hospital appointments and kind of that disruption to your routine and your daily life as well. So I think support is is needed for every part of the yeah, cancer journey. Because it doesn't just happen to you, funnily enough. Does, you're the one who maybe has had the diagnosis, but it does affect your family, your friends. Yeah, I think it affects, you know, 
your ability to show up in all different types of relationships. And like these um, viewers have been saying, everyone worries, don't they? We all assume the worst, and actually, it, it, so it affects everyone in different ways. Mm. How, how common is it for... Because it's happened actually to both the King and now the Princess of Wales that they've they've been told they're cancer, you know, they're, they're, they're non-cancerous in whatever treatments, whatever problems they've got, but then it's that that post-op testing which has then provided the worrying news. But doesn't it just highlight the importance of that early diagnosis mm -hmm. and mm. picking up on symptoms early? What cancer unfortunately will affect one in two of us in our lifetime, and that's probably only going to increase as we have an ageing population and we have more advanced diagnostic techniques so we get better at picking up cancers. But we know that the earlier you pick up a cancer, the better the outcomes. And so I think this really highlights that anyone sitting at home with niggling symptoms or putting off going for a cancer screening programme, actually, we can hear positive stories if you do go to them and pick it up early. And maybe not just thinking of cancer screening or something, but actually going to your doctor with all sorts of little niggles and worries that you might not think is cancer at all, but can sometimes show up. I mean, the worry, I think, with most people watching at the moment is to say, can you get to see your doctor about small things? Yeah, I think that's the, a big comment that's going to come back on mm. this, is people saying, well, it's easy saying that, but it's difficult to get an appointment. Difficult doesn't mean impossible. It might be that you have to wait a little while, or it might be that you have to do something like a telephone call, but you can certainly make contact with a healthcare professional. It doesn't always necessarily have to be a doctor. It could also be, um, you know, another healthcare professional as well. Um, but that shouldn't put people off reaching out. Now, we don't know um, exactly what is wrong with Catherine, apart from uh, uh, it's something abdominal. All right, and that's where she wants to leave it, and that's absolutely within her right. But will it... It can be embarrassing, doesn't it, when... I mean, not that I've ever had to go for a smear test, obviously, but, you know, women have got smear tests, men have got prostate checks. There was the Charles effect over yeah, prostate, yeah. wasn't there, which was very important. Uh, Christopher has just been in touch, testicular cancer. A lot of these things are what we would consider embarrassing to go to a doctor with initially. How do you deal with it when someone goes in with a very personal problem like that? Does it phase you at all, or have you just seen it so many times? I think it's funny because we think these topics are embarrassing as patients because they're things we don't talk about often. So it's taboo subjects and you might feel a bit of embarrassment or shame around them. But for doctors or nurses or any other healthcare professional, this is honestly our day job. We see it all the time and it isn't embarrassing. Doctors don't care what you look like or anything like that, pe things that worry people. It's honestly things we see day to day. So mm. um, please never think that your doctor's ever going to judge or anything like that. It's really not embarrassing for us. We see it all the time. Yeah, it's, it's just as a patient, you've sort of got to get through the door. Yeah. You? Yes. Interestingly enough, someone said to me um, quite recently that they were, they, there was a chance they'd had to go, they would have to go for a colonoscopy. Mm. And their concern... <laughs> else was it well my bottom's a bit big mm. oh no and, and but that's not going to matter no. is it no one's going to give a think about it twice honestly we're not thinking about things like that and i think you know one thing that my advice would be is to voice those concerns to the healthcare professional because often they will put you at ease or if someone's worried you mentioned a smear test you know about it being painful or um not knowing what to expect if you voice your concerns the Person, the practitioner is going to talk it through with you and that often eases the anxiety. Because you have to yeah. remember they've done it a million times. Thanks. A million times. Mm. And I think often what we have in our head is worse than what it actually turns out to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's worth remembering. Uh, Frankie, good to see you. Good to see you. As always. Um, and do bear that in mind, because if you're thinking... And this is the chance, like we saw with the Charles effect, with men making inquiries about prostates, then large prostates that he was going in for treatment for. It's embarrassing. It can be a bit concerning, but don't be embarrassed. You've just got to go. You've got to take that first step because it's better to have things sorted oh, yes. out than left. Yeah. So, and Christopher with his testicular cancer at 28, heck, that must have been embarrassing oh, yes. for him to go, got to face it. And then here he is at 60. Two beautiful fit. children, you know, physically fit. Yeah. He's beaten it. So, there you go. That's a positive message for you. Be brave, especially the gentlemen, because I think we're worse than women. Hang on! Why especially the gentlemen? Because men are worse at going to the doctors and things than women.
aren't they? Is that a fair point, Frankie? I think women are much more likely to you know, talk about an embarrassing symptom with their friends over coffee and therefore more likely to go to the doctor. Men mm. definitely do bottle things up a bit more. Oh, yeah. That certainly was the case with me. It was talking to my sisters and my best friend. They made me go to the doctor. Yeah. Whereas men don't talk about things like that, no. do they? No, they just talk about, you know, whether Arsenal won at home last night. Doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Mind you, talking of things like that, we're going to be going through the sport in just a minute with Aidan. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Now, what's going on in Scotland? So they're implementing these draconian hate speech laws, which are going to come in, into force on April the 1st, I kid oh, you not. Ironically, yeah. And then, um, basically, you can go to your local mushroom shop or whatever. Which I didn't know we had mushrooms farms in Scotland no. because people aren't that keen on vegetables up the road. They're, they're... Um, <laughs> but, not even a shiitake. But, um, but you can report a hate crime at these private... Pla but you can do it anonymously, and then the police will, uh, I don't know, unleash the hate monster. I, I don't know what, how this works. What's going on? I think the hate monster... <laughs> is mythical, yes. and um, I don't think the hate monster actually exists. What I do think is exists. I'm genuinely really worried about comedy, right? Yeah. Now, believe it or not, some people in Scotland, they're wrong, but they don't like me. Yeah. And I genuinely feel that a lot of time is going to be wasted. You know, if someone yeah. calls you a name in a shop, you probably deserved it, believe me. Um, also, called... comedy can be quite offensive, particularly yours. And I'm not necessarily sure. As I've said on the show before, and I remember my mum was worried when we, we, Scotland had decided that all um, residential properties needed special smoke alarms, and my mum was convinced this was to do with the hate crime and that there was a camera in them. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think she's being that paranoid. I mean, <laughs> Scotland is a kind of nanny state. You know, actually, Hamza Youssef, when he implemented the hate crime bill, put a, a subsection in that which said that they can criminalise you for things you've said in the privacy of your own home. Thankfully, Scotland doesn't have the largest arts festival in the world. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it does. No. It does. It actually does have that. And lots of comedians are up there. Now, we had this before, because if you go back about to, uh, to 2000 and, what was it, 2003, when New Labour were trying to push through their racial and religious hate crime bill, well, the comedians are silent now. Something has completely changed. There's been a gear shift. Oh, I mean, in the Irish hate crime bill, which is it, which is going through at the moment, they actually define hatred as hatred. Brilliant. It's a complete circular definition. Well, but, yeah, well, absolutely. And that tells me when something's woolly, that tells me that it's not going to be applied fairly. It's going to be applied so. according to the person applying it. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, every Sunday at 9.30 when I'll be interviewing the key players in British politics and taking them to task. And this report basically says that he's not fit to stand trial. With an upcoming election looming over Westminster, now is the time for clear, honest answers. I agree. And that's precisely what I'll get. Is he indecisive? Incompetent? That's the Camilla Tomini Show at 9.30 every Sunday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's election channel. Seven forty-two morning to you. Aidan's here with all the sport, and it's uh, quite fitting that we start off with uh, the Princess of Wales because Gareth Southgate would, made a, a point of, of raising this issue yesterday. Absolutely. Well, Prince William is the chairman of the FA. They have a close relationship with the monarchy. And last night, as is normal procedure, there was a press conference at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. England are training in London ahead of tonight's game at Wembley against uh, Brazil, and. Andy Walker, the head of communications, made a point of just saying before we had taken any questions from the floor, Gareth Southgate, has, Gareth Southgate has this to say about the Princess of Wales. We can hear now exactly what he had to say. Clearly, we've just heard about the um, Princess of Wales and we just wanted to send our thoughts and best wishes to her and all of her family. Um, remarkably dignified statement that she gave and... Uh, yeah, we obviously have a very close relationship with the family, so uh, we're very upset to hear the news, but uh, uh, hopefully everything goes well. 
And it, it, it's nice that he said it. Mm. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. And I also think we're going to mention the, the shirt story in a minute. And it's, yeah. it got me thinking just how, how pathetic the story is over the course of the week, isn't it, in context of what well, happened yes, yesterday. Well, yes, when you, when you, you know, balance it up against everything else. I, but... I know. And it's just, it's, just it's, it's, it's perspective at the end of the day. And, look, it caused a big row this week. I thought it was quite amusing, some of it, to be, to be honest with you. This is a flag that was three centimetres by two centimetres. But it has got people up in arms about it. Now, what I would say is that... The FA made a statement yesterday. It, in, it engaged all political leaders as well, especially in an election year. It was a good open goal for them to, yeah. to convey some patriotism, whether they mean it or, uh, or not. And £400 million is the figure that Nike paid for a 12-year agreement to make England's 12-year agreement, I yes. see. Yes, so it, that looks quite good value towards the end of it when you consider the return they get on that investment. I mean, they sell a couple of million every year. There's no question about that. Um, I mean, the shirts probably... themselves are attractive. They're, they're rather nice. Yes, so, so what the, the away one is a little bit controversial because it's uh, the, it, England don't tend to wear purpley blue type of colours. It's meant to be a doff to, or a nod to the, uh, the training kit that the England team in 66 wore. Uh, £125, though, an adult stadium version will cost you. So that was a slightly different material. The replica that you can buy in the sports shops uh, off the peg, £64.99. So that's the real scandal, I think. Well, I mean, I mean part of the... Are buying them, aren't they? They're flying off, sh off the shelves, uh, Stephen. Uh, I think it was Monday and Tuesday before the whole Ferraro was a, was, was a, was come, came, to, came to light. They sold out all the whole allocation on the on the website, and that means there'll be more there'll be more made. I don't think they're going to recall it because there's a production cost involved in this, yeah. and it's so expensive. And the home kit is a kind of a nod to the Italia 90, the the, the, the kind of collars, and the collars are interesting because obviously that's where the flag is on the back. Harvey Elliott last night, the England player, played for the England under 21s in Azerbaijan. They won 5-1. Uh, he scored two goals and he lifted his collar and everyone was saying, oh, that's because he doesn't want to show that horrible flag. In actual fact, he does that for most of his games. So he, he may come out afterwards and say, yeah, it's, it's about it. I did it in, uh, in defiance, but, you know, we'll see. We will see. Um, look, we're out of time. Short but sweet, Aidan. This time we'll talk about the, uh, the England friendly tonight yes. uh, a little bit later on. But for now, thank you. Uh, we'll bring right. more. Yeah, yep. go on. Well, I was going to say, absolutely, do stay with us because we will bring you more in a couple of moments looking through the papers. Nana Queer. Weekends from 3pm. Seriously couldn't get my head around it. Electric ambulances. The government are planning to spend our money, over half a billion, on a fleet of electric net zero ambulances. Even being told this alarm bell should be ringing, most of the people I know who have an EV have got rid of it because of the range anxiety and the inconvenience having simply just got too much for them, frankly. They never do as much as they say they won't, will anyway. First of all, they are totally impractical. The ambulances will take some four hours to charge each, so it will be out of action for that time. They will need space and individual chargers and having... And heaven forbid they need to do more than the 70 to 80 miles capability, which will be somewhat diminished depending on weather conditions and presumably the use of life-saving equipment to keep their patients alive, which I'm guessing will be powered by the same battery. Apparently, the NHS is committed to making all new emergency ambulances electric by 2030 and the entire fleet by 2045. In England alone, this would cost over £600 million. While electric cars don't produce any emissions from the tailpipe, there are emissions involved in the manufacture, as well as the production of the electricity used to charge them. So anyone driving an EV thinking what a great job they're doing needs to think again. Ambulances are usually changed every five years, and at about £150,000 per vehicle, the new EV version would need to be on the road for over 15 to make it commercially viable. So why should the public pay for this? In my view, it's commercially irresponsible and putting our lives at risk for the sake of an ever-questioning green agenda, which will bankrupt the country and is not in the best interest of the patients.
I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria Di Piero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Well, we're joined at 7.48. We're by Royal Broadcaster Rafe Head al Manku and showbiz reporter Stephanie Tetchy. Good morning to Good you morning. both. I mean, it has been um, quite a remarkable 13, 14 hours, hasn't it, Rafe? Um, and some, we've seen something which, you know, although uh, very sad news, though, let's stay very positive about it, um, but it unprecedented in the way it's been delivered. A completely unique and unprecedented announcement and one that uh, hopefully will actually put an end to all of the speculation that we've seen. Now, there's no reason to doubt what the Princess of Wales said, that the reason for the timing of this was to coincide with her, their mm. children finishing school for the Easter holidays. That totally makes sense to Yes, yeah. and they want to mm. protect them from media intrusion mm -hmm. outside the school, but also from what other children inside the school may also say. Yeah. So that's perfectly understandable. Now, the means by which the message was communicated, I think, may perhaps have been influenced by all of the social media yes. storm, because normally you would expect a simple press statement to be released mm -hmm. from Kensington Palace. Instead, we had this very personal, quite unique yeah. and unprecedented I've never seen Her Royal Highness speak so personally and intimately mm -hmm. and openly, or any royal, about their own life mm -hmm. in this man in manner. And the fact that it took place outside mm -hmm. with daffodils and, and you know, the mm -hmm. budding, you know, the, the buds yeah. of, of, of March behind her, I think also in an attempt to prove, yes, this, is, this has been taped this week. Gosh. Really, when you think it's Easter time, um, it's a very positive... Uh, yeah. Lesson, really. And I think, Rafe, you're right in the sense where a video was the only thing that was going to quiet all these ridiculous and vile conspiracy theorists who've been spouting so much on the internet and social media over the last few weeks. And what's even more ridiculous is that the BBC journalist who shot the video has come out to say nothing of this video has been edited. And it's just this whole line now of questioning everything that Kate's going to be putting out in the future future, I just hope that this kind of just puts it to bed. And, you know, a lot of celebrities have now eaten their words, including Blake Lively, an actress, Hollywood actress. She kind of poked fun of Kate before. And did she's, she? Yeah, she did. And she's, and she's a mother of four and she's well loved. Um, but she said she's been mortified from having made that social media thing that she said. And um, Kim Kardashian, she put up a post where she was standing by a car and she said, I'm on the way to look for Kate. So all of her fans now yeah, are saying... There was this, actually, big, this big thing, particularly in the States, like, where is Kate? Yeah. And now a lot of people are going to have to retract what they're saying. And it's just that point of how social media can be toxic. Toxic. Well, and let's hope from that negativity, let's hope there's lots of positivity that they draw from what people are saying now. Mm -hmm. And I'll get your reaction to that in a minute, but let's, mm -hmm. let's just see what some of our viewers and listeners, some of you have been saying about Princess of Wales today. As a family that understands the heartbreak that a cancer diagnosis can bring, we stand with you, Kate. We stand with Charles. We stand with anybody suffering life-threatening illnesses and we wish you and everybody else a speedy recovery and let's hope that recovery comes soon and you can start living your full life again. Thank you for all you're doing for other sufferers and for the hope and inspiration that you're giving them. The good wishes of the world are with you, ma'am, to which I add mine and those of my family. You're a brave lady. You can get through this. I've got no doubt at all about that. And I do know that the future of the monarchy is in safe hands with you and Prince William. 
get... Oh, See, that's oh. lovely. Bless you for going to the trouble to send those yeah. messages in. Um, but that's going to mean a lot, Rafe, isn't it? Actually, absolutely. I mean, that, that's the, de the voice of the decent British public mm. speaking. There. You know, we get too carried away with these social media influencers. Mm -hmm. But actually, the British people, and you know, all around the Commonwealth, everyone is united yeah. in supporting Kate, who they absolutely adore, because actually she's one of us. Yeah. You know, yeah, a, a commoner who married into the royal family, yeah. and she's brought a wonderful down-to-earth element to the monarchy, which you just, you're just seeing on the front pages of all our papers, dressed so informally. And, you know, hard to imagine, you know, the, the previous generation dressing like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think people really can relate to her. And that, gener that outpouring that we're seeing really is genuine. You know, mm -hmm. we've had viewers crying hearing mm -hmm. this news. Uh, and, of course, it's also because the, the beauty of monarchy is that we can all relate to it because it's a family. So the highs and the lows, yeah. the births, the marriages, the coronation, mm -hmm. but also the illnesses and the sickness, they affect us all. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it's very personal because we can all think about people in our own lives who have actually had this similar experience. Yeah. And I think that's what we do well, us Brits. I think we're quite good when it comes to rallying together to create a community and to care for people. And I think when it comes to royals, we care for them, we love for them. So when these kind of issues do break, that's when you actually see the best sides of British people. And I think it's just, even though there is some negativity, to the, towards this, I think mostly it's been positive. Yeah, and actually, what is lovely, we heard it from Charles, and I guess we'll hear in the coming weeks as yeah. well from from the Wales is that they do take notice of, this, of these mm. messages. Mm -hmm. I think they're more transparent now. I think mm. they know they're in that age where people want to feel like they're close to the royals, and I think it's nice to know that it's been recepted and received in a very good place. Well, and so I think many people have said they just want to hug, hug her. I think particularly because of the, the, you know, the tumult of the last few weeks that mm. the Princess of Wales has been through, mm. to get these messages of love and support now will be even more important yes. for her. I think so. I think you're absolutely mm. right. You've um, still got time to record one. Yes, you <laughs> have. <laughs> Send it in to gbviews at gbnews.com. Here's your weather. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers. Sponsors of Weather on GB News. Morning, welcome to your latest weather update from the Met Office for GB News. Pretty chilly out there this morning and a colder feel all weekend. Heavy downpours today for most of us. Tomorrow looks a better bet for a drier and a brighter day. There's some sunshine to be had this morning, but the cloud is bubbling up pretty quickly and we'll see showers become fairly widespread by late morning. Heavy downpours, some hail already in places and further thunderstorms are possible. More snow on the hills across Scotland and even the high parts of northern England, parts of the Pennines could see further snow showers as well. There will be some sunshine, but there's a brisk and cold wind. These are the top temperatures. Most of this week we've been in the mid-teens across the south, single digits for most of us at best today. Still quite a few of those showers around this evening, still very gusty, particularly so in the far northeast where the showers just keep on coming. More snow on the hills here through the night. Elsewhere it does turn a little bit drier and there'll be some decent clear spells. Again, it will turn pretty chilly, temperatures well down into single figures, but that breeze should stop too much in the way of frost. A cold start, though, to Sunday, but overall a brighter, drier day tomorrow. Not completely dry, there'll still be a few showers, particularly North Wales, maybe some feeding down through the Cheshire Gap, a few over eastern England and still some over northern Scotland. Still quite blustery along those eastern coasts as well, but elsewhere the wind's lighter, many places will be dry, and with those lighter winds it'll feel just a touch warmer as well. Goodbye. A brighter outlook with Bob Solar, sponsors of weather on GB News. Time is ticking on your chance to win the Great British Giveaway. There's a massive £12,345 in tax-free cash to spend however you like, along with £500 in shopping vouchers for your favourite store, a games console, a pizza oven and a portable Sonos smart speaker. And the best news? You could be our next big winner just like Phil. Didn't quite believe it and still can't. Uh, and if I can win it, anybody can win it. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,345 in tax-free cash, 
text GBWIN to 84902. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE19T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5 pm on Friday, the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at GBNews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. Britain's Newsroom, weekday mornings from 9.30. And I'd like to talk about Kate Middleton, mm. because I'm really confused here. Everyone, where is she? What is she doing? Why did she Photoshop this? Where this, what that? Is Why can't her? we just leave her alone? What is going on here? What, what's, your, what's your thoughts on this? I think it's tough because naturally, you know, if I was looking at this and we didn't have all the context of everything that's gone on in the royal family previously, I would be saying um, leave her alone. But at the same time, I think that the royal family have made a huge mistake by setting a certain precedent when it mm -hmm. comes to Meghan. And I think that when you've kind of branded Meghan as the one that's demanding privacy, but then not really realising that she's got a particular role and a duty and has to kind of be paraded in front of us no matter what, then you end up in a position now when Kate really needs the privacy and she can't get it because we're so used to being in their business and finding out everything about them, even after they've given birth. Mm. That precedent I get when that, the women. But what if? What if it's a mental health issue? What mm. if it's something like that, or, mm. or a long, ongoing physical? Uh, thing that she doesn't want to talk about. But you know what it is? It's because everyone sees the royal family as like ambassadors. So they're thinking, well, she's at home and some people controversially will be like, well, we need to see her. Mm. She's like the face of multiple charities. They're basically, unfortunately, with the royal family, if they're not mm. seen, people are like, well, what's the point of them? And I know that sounds harsh, but, you know, this is not some person that she, she can't work from home. Well, she's been described as the golden goose. 100%. Yeah. She, I mean, yeah. you, they rely on her a lot, yeah. don't they? I mean, she's yeah. front page of the newspapers whenever she steps out. Yeah. It's been amazing actually seeing photos of her this morning, how much we all miss her. You know, we haven't mm. seen her since just after Christmas. Mm. Um, what do you think about her being the one to apologise? Having her take the rap for it, even if she mm. did do it, I think that was, was quite unfair, really. And they so should well. have had, you know, a, a bit a of a one. better strategy. Good morning, it's 8 o'clock, Saturday the 23rd of March. Today, the world rallies around the Princess of Wales after devastating news of her cancer diagnosis. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. I'm live in Windsor where the princess recorded that courageous video message on Wednesday. I'll be bringing you the latest reaction and analysis throughout the morning. Well, overnight, there's been an outpouring of love for the nation's favourite royal. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak commends Princess Kate's tremendous bravery and her brother, James, poignantly said, we will climb this mountain with you, Kate. Well, we're looking at the road to recovery for the Princess of Wales with the help of top doctors and oncologists throughout the morning. Chemotherapy is not great to have. There's no doubt that despite the fact that we now control the sickness you get with it and various other side effects, it really tires you out. Good morning. We'll be hearing from England manager Gareth Southgate, who was among the well-wishers last night following the news from the Princess of Wales. England faced Brazil in a friendly at Wembley this evening. Colder out there today. Not quite the case of winter returning, but definitely a drop in temperatures. Lots of heavy showers around today as well. Tomorrow, though, looks drier and brighter. Join me later for a full forecast. Morning to you. I'm Stephen Dixon. And I'm Anne Diamond, and this is Breakfast on GB News. Uh, loads of you getting in touch this morning. I mean, honestly, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails. I just want to start with Lorraine, which is a slightly odd choice mm. in, a, in a sense. But she says, uh, I enjoy your show, uh, but I hope that all the media that hounded the princess over a photo now hang their heads in shame. 
And do you know what, Lorraine? I absolutely agree with you. I said from the beginning of that, what's all the fuss about? It's been slightly tweaked, like loads of people do with their pictures these days. Stop making a big fuss over it. And I think this puts it in perspective. I think you're absolutely right on that one. Hmm. It's a picture. It was the Mother's Day picture, yeah. Mother's Day picture, yeah. And you can what tell, and again, having heard her news last night, you understand a little bit more about... She probably thought, I ought to put out a Mother's Day picture. Yeah. Um, and they did a quick photo. And, and she edited it a bit, which is what... So yeah. many people do. I mean, tweaked her, tweaked her hands or something. I mean, who cares? Actually, Lorraine goes on to say, we have an attitude that what we want is important. And it shows how selfish our society has become. If we actually cared about people, our atti attitude would change. Leave her alone. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But there you go. I, you see, I, I think the leave her alone thing, now we know that... Um... She's ill and she's fighting this. Uh, of course, leave her alone. But I think the problem was that we didn't know. And when there's a vacuum of knowledge, people fill it in themselves, don't they? And mm. it got totally out of control. Yes. And they are the royals. Um, so, to a certain extent, they have a relationship with us. And I think, I think there was a point where we felt that we just didn't know and we needed to know. I don't know. See, I, I, I no, don't I feel, agree I feel uncomfortable with that. saying that too, but at the same time... They are our royal family. I mean, because we were told she was having this major surgery, I think we could have just left it at that. We should have, really. But people did want to know them. But I, I think that's where Lorraine's right. What we want is important. Well, as you say, Lorraine, it isn't. Um, Val uh, says, my heart goes out to Princess Catherine. She's so brave speaking out, she did last night. I've been diagnosed with terminal... Per uh, Peritoneal mesothelioma. 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 Mm. Uh, at the moment, I'm stable and about to embark on walking the 117 kilometer Camino Inglese. You have to stay positive. Catherine's words of not losing faith and hope fell firmly on my heart. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. You see, and that's the impact she's having. We wish you all the very best, Val, with that, that walk. As as yeah, that's else. a heck of a walk. That, um, it's very important. A lot of people do that walk as a sort of, um, what do you call it, a mission. Like a, a, a pilgrimage. Like a pilgrimage. Thing. It's mm. very important, apparently. Um, Amanda makes a very good point as well. She said, you've got to consider that Catherine will be grieving. Loss and grief happens when you lose something that's important to you, like your health. Um, grief is the mechanism to come to terms with the new normal. Mm. And there's no doubt that the, the moment she was told the word cancer, that was the first day of the rest of her life. Because I know uh, people who've, who've fought and survived cancer for many, 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 many years. And, but it does change your life. Mm. It changes the way you look upon your own body. It changes your respect for your own body and for others around you, I think. And it also gives you a view of mortality. I have friend of, a friend of mine who um, was stage four and is now in remission, but sort of knows if it comes, if it comes back, mm. that's it. It's always a thing. worry. And so she's still having lots of treatments and therapies and things. Um, and so it does give you a view on mortality, in a way, which perhaps that's important. I don't, but the, but the, let's stay positive. The good news in all this, she seems determined that she's fighting this, she seems well, it's been caught early. It's all very positive. Nevertheless, it was a shock when she said what she did. This is the video. I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This of course came as a huge shock and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment, but most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them 
and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. As I've said to them, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body and spirits. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too, as is the love, support and kindness that has been shown by so many of you. It means so much to us both. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. Bless her, wasn't it lovely to include mm -hmm. everybody in that last mm -hmm. statement? Let's pop down to Windsor now and join GB News's Royal Correspondent Cameron Walker. Hi there, Cameron. As Windsor wakes up this morning, is anyone telling you how they're feeling? I know they're already putting flowers down by the wall, aren't they? Yes, they certainly were, and a member of the public uh, laid some flowers for the princess outside the gates of Windsor Castle. The police have actually taken them inside of the castle grounds now. The princess lives in Adelaide Cottage with Prince William and her three young children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. And it was on Wednesday within the grounds of Windsor that the princess recorded that courageous and powerful video message uh, to the nation. And we've spoken about um, earlier on about just how rare it is for a member of the royal family to personally discuss their private medical details uh, essentially with the world. Usually it would be done in the form of a palace statement either from Kensington Palace or Buckingham Palace but the princess would have been incredibly aware of the amount of interest there has been in her health over the last three months. She has continually asked for privacy as has her office uh, Kensington Palace and yet she thought uh, it was the right thing to do to record this video message so she could tell the public in her own words uh, what she has been going through. Of course we had that Mother's Day photograph of her didn't we where she said she had edited parts of it she wanted in the best with the best of intentions to present her family in the best possible lights that day but for, for the absolute avoidance of doubts I can tell you that that video which you just watched was not edited it was recorded independently by BBC Studios as well uh, so there was that level of independence so that video was absolutely authentic and from the Princess of Wales's heart there has been a huge outpouring of support uh, for her since that message uh, has been released to the public. Of course, it's a lot for her to process being diagnosed with cancer. She's undergoing a preventative chemotherapy at the moment. She started that at the end of February. It's also a lot, of course, for Prince William to process. Not only has his father been rec recently diagnosed with cancer, but now his wife has as well. And they have chosen the right time to tell and explain to their three young children what the princess is going to. And the, prince, uh, the children are now on Easter holidays, which is why they decided uh, last night was the right time to tell the world about the princess's cancer diagnosis. A spokesperson for the king says that His Majesty is proud of his beloved daughter-in-law for her courage. James Middleton, who is Princess Catherine's younger brother, posted a really sweet Instagram message last night of a photograph of her of him and Catherine when they were children. And he said, over the years, we have climbed many mountains together. As a family, we will climb this one with you too. Of course, the Middleton, Middleton family, incredibly a close, tight-knit family. Carol and Mike, Catherine's parents, uh, as well as James, her, her brother, and Pippa, her sister, as well. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have released a message from the other side of the Atlantic. They say we wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope they are able to do so privately and in peace. Now, next Sunday, Easter Sunday, there is the traditional royal family Easter Sunday service in St George's Chapel in Windsor behind me. The Prince and Princess of Wales will not be attending that, understandably. They are taking time out to care for Catherine and to be with each other at this difficult time. Cameron, thanks very much indeed. Well, we're joined now by Royal Editor at Vanity Fair, Katie Nicholl, and veteran Royal Correspondent, <laughs> Nicholas Owen. <laughs>
Sorry fair point. That. It is a fair point, Nicholas. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Katie, I just wanted to mention uh, a, an email we've had from Eve this morning, because I think it highlights beautifully what Catherine actually did yesterday. Uh, she said um, she spoke purely and directly from the heart. It felt as though it was a I'm here for you, you're here for me, we're all here for each other type of message. And I just think that came across so beautifully last night. Yes, I mean, listen, um, Nicholas is the veteran. I've also been doing this for 20 years, and I think both of us would agree that we've never heard a member of the royal family speak directly to the public in the way that she does. Look at what she's wearing. Look at the fact that she's not wearing really any makeup. This is the real Catherine. This is, this is the Catherine who wants to address the public, set the record straight, and... Um, explain what's been going on behind the scenes at a time when people have been wondering and those wonders have turned into, um, well, um, pretty unpleasant at a point, vicious rumour and speculation about her health. This will hopefully bring an end to all of that. And also what's so important in this message is her plea for privacy. They need to heal and come together now as a family. Um, and as James Middleton said in that lovely message, they climbed many mountains. William and Catherine too, this is a couple who've been together for 20 years nearly. Um, they will overcome this, but they need some time and space in which to do that. I think the other thing that came over in the video was her look of vulnerability. Um, and I think maybe that that's something we all have to reflect on as well. The, the pressure, uh, the speculation, her, obviously put her into a position where she felt she ought to say something um, on camera. Uh, but I look at her now and she's just there in an ordinary pair of jeans and a jumper, um, as you said, with, without much makeup, certainly. She looks pale, she looks vulnerable. Um, we all feel for her, don't we? Of course we do, of course we do. And I think there'll be many people who have sort of fueled that, quite frankly, ludicrous narrative on social media hastily deleting posts, um, uh, perhaps reconsidering some of the things they said. This is this is a young woman. Yes, she's a member of the royal family, the most popular member of the royal family in many of the polls that are conducted. She is a future queen. She's the Princess of Wales. We all know the weight and of duty and history that, that comes with that title. But she's a mum. She's a person. She's someone who's gone through a shocking diagnosis and who now needs time and space to get better. Uh, Nicholas, I mean, that's that's a very good point, isn't it? Because the one thing that comes across from this is she's one of us. She is just a human, like the rest of us. Yes, yes. We've been talking about this this morning, haven't we? My, my line on this being that, um, you know, we're wonderful human beings in all sorts of ways. We have brains and everything else, and we can do so much with our lives with a bit of luck. Uh, but we're so kind of badly designed as well. So much can go wrong. Mm. And here we are, young woman, 42 years old, uh, telling the world very clearly what's happening to her. Uh, but I think it's just a... a, a, a how can I put this properly? A kind of splendid occasion, in a way. Uh, all of us who've been through cancer, and, and so many have, uh, one in three of the population, let's remind ourselves, that's the figure now given for people who will suffer cancer at some stage of their lives. Uh, my own case, 22 years ago, and here I am. Uh, uh, my own wife, at 10 years ago, she's had it, and we went through a, uh, a very difficult period. But... Back again. Uh, it, it's a message of hope. Uh, it's an extraordinary thing for the royal family. Nothing in my years of, 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 of paying very close attention to everything happening uh, with that family uh, could prepare us for the sort of openness that we now see. But what a great Philip it is. What a mm. great thing it is for so many people uh, who, who face this thing that they've got someone like the Princess of Wales being so very, very open about it. I, I think it's... Uh, uh, it's a great day. What are it's your thoughts day. about mm. Prince William? Because um, he's got both his father fighting cancer and mm. his wife, and mm. he must feel that the weight of everything is on his shoulders. <laughs> yes, yes, he must. Yes, he must. Well, I think... Uh, I always say the, the thing about cancer... Let, let, let's see if you agree with me, Anne. Uh, when you are the person having it, it's, it's a very strange thing. Nature kind of cocoons you in a way. It picks you up and says, oh... This is, oh, what a dratted nuisance this is, but I've got to get on with this. It's the people it's around, the people around you, you who <laughs> suffer. And, and indeed, William is bearing a very, very strong burden. I was very struck by that statement yesterday, read it very, very carefully through, uh, and she mentions 
Uh, you know, she mentions the king, she mentions her children, mentions William twice. Mm -hmm. It's mm. quite right, too, mm -hmm. because that's, as you say, that, that this is the burden uh, that, that that man uh, has got to bear. And he's got to do it in public, and he knows that every time he steps out now, whatever he does, it's going to be the thing. Of, how is Kate? How is Kate? How is she getting on? Yes. How is she getting on? That's mm. not going to go away. This is... No. Uh, it sort of set, a, set, set something going. This does not finish a story off, let's be clear about this. I mean, there's going to be endless, endless speculation. Let's hope all that trolling nonsense has gone and all that goes away and, and people can stop being so damn stupid about things. And horrible. But, 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 the, but the attention to it will, 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 will continue and mm. will be also a very important focus, of course, on cancer treatment itself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, as I say, what, what, a, what, a, what a great thing. What a great thing. Great inspiration. But William, yeah, it, it, it is a it is a burden. It is going to be a great. Well, it's burden. interesting yeah, that yeah. you've been both a patient and mm. somebody you know married to your your wife. And, yeah. So yeah. you must have had that a lot. People asking you how your wife is. Yeah, well, absolutely. You're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Gosh, I yeah. don't know. It's happened to me too. It's. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and and I just think of Prince William. I mean, we we know, all know the, the the tragedy that happened when he lost his mum. Mm. He lost his grandmother only a short time ago. And given that he is the heir to the throne, I mean, he must have looked to her. They had quite a close relationship, didn't they? Now he must be very fearful for his father and his wife. And he's got to, he's got to keep everything tootling along well, because he's got three little children with him at home now. Yes, indeed. Um, we mustn't forget them, must we? The, 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 the three small children, that's another very difficult thing, which I thought, again, uh, Kate, Catherine, the, the princess, dealt with so well. You know, how do you tell the children? What do you tell the children mm. uh, at, the, at their age? How do you put their minds at rest? Because they're, going to, they're out in the world as well. I mean, yeah. the, gone are the days when royal children were just spent their time in castles with nannies. Uh, <laughs> going, they go to school. I know they're on holiday at the moment, but uh, you know, this is all swirling around them as well. Yes. And uh, I think she's shone a light on that. that that's a, another very, very tricky part of the she's, whole she's, thing. She's turned this into a real positive. Um, but I did hear someone, Katie, last night saying, well, this leaves the, the royal family in a very fragile position because key members are out, of, are out of action now, which, of course, includes Prince William to a large degree. But I wonder if that's the case, because actually... Th those other members of the royal family are really stepping up, aren't they, to all of us? I mean, look at what Princess Anne does. Look at what the, the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh uh, are doing now. Um, the family fights on, doesn't it? Absolutely. I mean, it was the late Queen's mantra, you know, keep calm and carry on. And that is exactly what the royal family will do. We know that it was always part of King Charles's vision to have a slimmed down monarchy, not least to um, not be a financial burden on the public purse. I think, yes, you look at the royal family today and it is, I think, far slimmer than even the king anticipated it would be. Of course, we don't have Harry, we don't have Meghan, we don't have the Duke of York. But you're absolutely right, Stephen. We've got we've got strength in the numbers that we do have. Um, Princess Anne, the Prince Princess Royal, who carries out an unbelievable number of duties. And let's not forget Queen Camilla in all of this, our 76-year-old oh, no. Queen Consort, who has been, frankly, remarkable. I mean, when you consider some 25 years ago that she was the reviled mistress, um, and you look at that metamorphosis today, it, yes, you're absolutely right, Nicholas, Prince William is carrying a huge weight on his shoulders. But what about the weight the Queen is carrying? You know, the, the the weight of the crown is quite literally on her at the moment. She stood in for the King at the recent Commonwealth Day service. I think we'll see her stand in for him at other engagements. We're about to come into a really busy period for the royal calendar as we come into spring. Um, and I think we will see those duties fall largely to Queen Camilla because, you know, the Prince of Wales is going to need to put his family first. He always has done. That's not going to change. He's he's back at work, and um, but we can't expect to see him perhaps carrying out as busy a schedule as of, of events as he might have done. You know, his focus has to be on his wife and his young family. So yes, I think thank goodness that um, Queen Camilla has shown that she is resilient, robust, and has incredible energy levels. Because I think it's just worth saying she is doing a fantastic job. Yeah, that's it. it's, a, it's a very good point, really well is. made. Um, Katie, Nicholas, thank you both very much indeed. She'll be the senior royal at the Easter Sunday service. Yes, she will. She? Well, unless, the, unless the king does go to that, which he might do. He might do, yeah. It's only just around the corner. It is. <laughs> <Right>. Well, it is. <laughs> Isn't it? So. Week tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, uh, and if you want to send um, a message, uh, I, in the usual way, um, by email, gbviews at gbnews.com, 
please do. Um, but if you want to send a video message, you can do that too. And quite a few of our lovely viewers have done that. So, um, yeah, it's have quite a go. Nice, still plenty actually. of time. Quite a nice thing to do. Mm. Um, it's 8.22. Let's have a look at some of the other stories heading into the newsroom this morning. And overnight, a US official has confirmed Islamic State were responsible for a shooting at a concert in Moscow last night. Several gunmen are said to have entered the concert venue and opened fire in an attack Russian authorities say has killed at least 60 and injured more than 100. Donald Trump is set to return to the stock market with um, his social media platform, Truth Social, to become a publicly listed company. Um, he's scrambling to pay his £365 million fraud fine, which would put Truth Social on the stock market um, and perhaps generate billions in profits for him. Ireland's High Court has ruled Britain is no longer a safe place for asylum seekers because of the threat of deportation to Rwanda. A judge found in favour of two migrants who argued a return to the UK was unlawful as it's no longer a safe third country for asylum seekers. I can't work out why Truth Social be, would be worth three billion dollars. Well, if he won the presidency, it becomes his sort of social media... It would be, become a very big deal, wouldn't it, this yeah. social media platform? I don't know, but it's all, got, it's all down to advertisers and... How many people does it have on it? I don't know. All his followers, probably. Well, yeah, probably. Which are considerably sort of half America. <laughs> well, so maybe yes. it is worth a lot, but uh, three it's billion. an interesting way of raising money to pay that fine. Three billion sounds a lot. It's more than, than Elon Musk paid for Twitter, isn't mm. it? Yeah. That's what confuses me slightly. But well, anyway. everything Donald Trump does is bigger and huger than anything else. That's true. Isn't it? Very true. Let's see if we can have a, ha a hand with our weather and make it brighter and warmer than it currently is. A brighter outlook with Box Solar, sponsors of weather on GB News. Morning. Welcome to your latest weather update from the Met Office for GB News. Pretty chilly out there this morning and a colder feel all weekend. Heavy downpours today for most of us. Tomorrow looks a better bet for a drier and a brighter day. There's some sunshine to be had this morning, but the cloud is bubbling up pretty quickly and we'll see showers become fairly widespread by late morning. Heavy downpours, some hail already in places and further thunderstorms are possible. More snow on the hills across Scotland and even the high parts of northern England, parts of the Pennines could see further snow showers as well. There will be some sunshine, but there's a brisk and cold wind. These are the top temperatures. Most of this week we've been in the mid-teens across the south, single digits for most of us at best today. Still quite a few of those showers around this evening, still very gusty, particularly so in the far northeast where the showers just keep on coming. More snow on the hills here through the night. Elsewhere it does turn a little bit drier and there'll be some decent clear spells. Again, it will turn pretty chilly, temperatures well down into single figures, but that breeze should stop too much in the way of frost. A cold start though to Sunday, but overall a brighter, drier day tomorrow. Not completely dry, there'll still be a few showers, particularly North Wales, maybe some feeding down through the Cheshire Gap, a few over eastern England and still some over northern Scotland. Still quite blustery along those eastern coasts as well, but elsewhere the wind's lighter, many places will be dry, and with those lighter winds it'll feel just a touch warmer as well. Goodbye. That warm feeling inside from Box Spoilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. Now, we want to congratulate Charles from Stoke-on-Trent. Now, you might wonder why. Because he's quite a character. Mm, and he won £18,000 in our last great British giveaway. We know he watches the show. And now he's got his grubby little hands <laughs> on all that prize money, so spend it wisely, Charles. Well done. Here's the moment we told him. Charles, I have some really good news for you. You're the winner of the Great British Giveaway. I'm slipping neck. Oh, dear. You've won £18,000. Slipping neck. That's a big surprise. <laughs> slipping neck. I, I don't know what to say. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. 
I'd well, get my grubby little hands on it at yeah. all. <laughs> yes, I think you might not like having grubby little oh, hands. Oh, no, it's a nice turn of phrase. Well, still, if they're holding all that money, who it cares? Be anyway, Ooh. Charles was a brilliant winner. You could be too, with our latest giveaway, which includes a shopping spree, a garden gadget bundle and £12,345 in cash. This is what you do. There's still time to win our giveaway packed with seasonal essentials. First, there's an incredible £12,345 in tax-free cash to be won. Cash to make your bank account bloom. Plus a spring shopping spree with £500 in shopping vouchers to spend in the store of your choice. And finally, a garden gadget package including a handheld games console, a portable smart speaker and a pizza oven. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,300 £145 in tax free cash, text GBWIN to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5 pm on Friday, the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. I just wonder if Charles got yeah, his, who won, who won, who won the, the last yeah. one, 18 grand, was it transferred into his bank account or did he actually have it all delivered in fivers? You'd want it delivered in a big shiny suitcase. Oh, you would, yeah. Then when you, you open just, it up like they do in movies yeah, and it's all there. Yeah, and... Throw it about. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Dear me. I'm That's sure they just no transfer it into they your bank account. Did, yeah. yeah, which is not as exciting, is no, it? it's not really. But there you go. Anyway, look, uh, stay with us. We're going to get uh, a medical perspective on what we heard from the Princess of Wales last night in just a moment. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubry, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday. Can you just let us know if, if there have been people getting into contact with you as a local councillor about how they feel about every lamppost, which is supposed to be public, mm. neutral territory, being covered in these flags? Has it made some of your constituents nervous to walk the streets? It's a complete range of people, including people who are from the Bangladeshi Muslim community who support who support the um, endeavours of what's going of, of Gaza, of what is going on, and are hostile to the actions of the Israeli government, but feel that they shouldn't have these flags on streets. So if you walk down some of the streets, it doesn't look like a London borough. It looks almost like what you would imagine in Ceausescu's Romania, with flags on every street lamp. Well, well, Peter, can you let us know? Uh, what it's like in the council and their activities in Tower Hamlets. How much time, for example, has been spent discussing issues relating to what's happening in the Middle East? Has it dominated quite a lot of time? No. Um, let's be absolutely fair to the mayor and the administration. There's a heck of a lot to do in this council. We have extremes of deprivation and, um, of course, wealth because of the Canary Wharf and City Fringe. We have huge problems on the council. And to be fair, the council spends its time doing council matters. And they said initially, in fact, absolutely carefully at council meetings, we can't interfere with foreign policy, but we've got a lot to do on national policy and local policy. Let's concentrate on that. So there hasn't been too much pressure that you can see from people living in the borough for the council to take a stance? Members of the council and the administration have... have um, put their support. As I've said, we're talking of free speech. They're entitled to do that, but it's what 
happens where the council is responding to absolutely everybody, all 320,000 people who live in our borough. Now, throughout the morning, we've been talking, of course, about that, frankly, incredible video that the Princess of Wales released last night. Brave, candid, revealing... Um, vulnerable. And, vulnerable, yeah, but also caring about others as she told the world of her cancer diagnosis. Well, earlier on, we spoke to the former chief of the World Health Organization's cancer programme, Professor Carol Sikora. When I began nearly 50 years ago in cancer, everybody got the same thing. Now, it's very personal. We look at all the data, the pathology, the imaging, uh, the biopsies from the operation, and then even more now, a molecular analysis, looking at genes, gene proteins and other factors in the tumour in a very sophisticated way to predict the risk of it coming back. If the risk is very low, someone may just have surgery. If the risk is higher, we recommend chemotherapy, adjuvant chemotherapy. And that's probably what's happening. You know, we don't want to speculate where it's coming from or anything, but for many different types of cancer, adjuvant chemotherapy is of proven value. Trials over the last 20 years have really demonstrated benefit. And of course, the outcomes for everybody is much better if we tailor the treatment to the patient. I suppose this sort of chemotherapy is different for every medical case in front of you. Um, but what form might it take? And does it mean that that word preventive, which is the word she used, um, does that mean that the cancer has physically been removed? That's the most likely situation. And the chemotherapy is there just to prevent it coming back. And so, uh, you know, the, the outcome, the, the likely outlook is really quite good. I mean, you know, without all the details, it's difficult to make any meaningful statement on that. But, you know, chemotherapy is not great to have. There's no doubt that despite the fact that we now control the sickness you get with it and various other side effects, it really tires you out. And, you know, uh, it usually lasts four to six months, depending on the regimen used. So uh, I suspect you'll be out of action for a bit of time, and it's better to take it easy. I tell my patients, don't do anything the day after chemotherapy and take, cancel everything. Don't go to work, just sit at home, watch daytime TV, relax, see people, and, and get plenty of exercise and that's that keeps people going uh, just gentle exercise walking in a park or something like that um how important i know it, it might seem a strange question to ask a, a physician in a sense but how important is is a positive mental attitude in, in making a, a recovery from something like this it's a very interesting question, Stephen, and there's been a lot of research on that. Do people with a positive attitude do better overall? And it does seem to be the case. People that approach the, 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 whole, the, the whole problem with a positive, uh, you know, determined approach to beat it seem to do better. Uh, the difficulty is we're all different, and, you know, I think what this shows is that the royal family is no different than the rest of us from other families in that they have, you know, the difficulty of a cancer diagnosis, amongst them two, three cancer diagnoses. So I think the approach is to try and build people's confidence in the ability to live. She mentioned the words body, mind and spirit. The body is dealt with by the chemotherapy, but the mind and spirit you have to do with other people and partly on your own, how you react psychologically to knowing that you have a, a potentially life-threatening disease. And he should know he's one of the world's absolute leading experts oh, yeah. on cancers and the treatment of them. And how positive he was, Yes, actually. And the fact that these, these treatments are much more tailored now. Mm. Can um, I just show you the, the Daily oh, Telegraph? I was just surprised, you know, we haven't seen this sort of coverage of one woman since the days of Diana, I don't no, think. No, we haven't, no. And that front page there, um, which is all about Kate. Can you see it? I don't know, let's see. Oh, there right. you are. And then that huge spread on pages two and three, and another huge spread um, there. I mean, the press can't get enough of her at the moment. And as I was just saying to you, when those children are out um, in Windsor, maybe, or somewhere today, I hope they're not taken into a news agent's because seeing your mum 
on the front page no. of every newspaper talking about cancer would be very frightening, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mind you, they must be used to it a little bit. Yes, but in, it's in every front page, their mum and the word cancer, that's just, yeah. you know... But, you know, they won't be going into the news agents. No, no, they? no, they won't. They'll be tucked away somewhere, quite rightly. <laughs> Um, right, Aidan's got your sport in just a moment. Morning. Yes, indeed. Good morning to you. Gareth Southgate was among the well-wishers yesterday at the Tottenham Hotspur training ground before England's match against Brazil tonight at Wembley. More from him after this break. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise and who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. Tubes & Co. Weekdays from 6pm. Get this right, we all know by now, don't we, that so many uh, NHS workers are abused by people that they're trying to help. We'll all agree that that is pretty damn disgraceful, but what do we do about it? Because now uh, some London hospitals are looking at whether or not they should be able to ban people that do this for a year from those hospital facilities. Is that the way forward? Daniel, do you like this? No abuse, no excuse, that is the campaign? There's no other choice for most people. It's either the NHS or nothing. And if you're going to take that monopolistic power, then, then you need, I think, you have responsibilities towards people. You can't cut them off. So there are ways in which, I of course, them. you can bring criminal charges against them. Uh, if they commit a criminal offence, that's fine. They might even be locked up in jail. But what you can't do is cut off health services because you're the only supplier. Well, yes, Peter? I think you can cut it off and you should cut it off. London is very different from everywhere else, and it goes back to a conversation about immigration. The majority of nurses in London are either African or Filipino, and it harks back to their nature and their culture. When you're younger, your parents look after you. When you're older, you look after them. They don't go into homes. So there's a way that a threshold of tolerance they have that is above and beyond most people. So, because I found, like, when I was younger, most of the nurses were white. Now they work in hospitals in Ascot and Somerset. London is the war zone. I have seen horrific things happen to nurses, and they stay, they show up for work. There's a protection they are owed, beyond owed. And if you abuse, if you abuse something that's offered to you as a part of your citizenship, you should be, there should be a penalty for that. For the same reason, you. if you're you obliged to use if you it. Commit, There's no offer involved in and, the NHS. But it is, no, but there is an offer, because at there the end of the day, like, you, earn, you figure out how to get money and go private. So just because you've created something right, that so gives that's you the no, solution. no, it's easy. If it's so that's easy, an impossible solution. They've created something that's kind and easy and beneficial to all, indeed. But it's a good thing for all. Do not abuse it. That simple. Eight forty. Morning. Morning. Time for the sport. Aidan's here, and it's interesting that uh, the Princess of Wales has even touched the sporting world. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's no surprise to me, actually, because Prince William, her husband, is, is the chairman of the FA, has been for a number of years. They have... Gareth Southgate played for Aston Villa, who... Of course, yes. ..who Prince William supported and went to games when Gareth Southgate was, uh, was a much younger man back in the 90s when he was, Prince William used to go there as a child. So, yesterday... England had set up training base at Tottenham Hotspur's training ground in Enfield, North East London, and there was a press conference, which is a normal procedure ahead of the game against Brazil tonight. Director of Comms, Andy Walker, just said to the media, the assembled media, before we took questions from the floor, that Gareth Southgate had something to say, and we can hear that right now. Clearly, we've just heard about the um, Princess of Wales, and we just wanted to send our thoughts and best wishes to her and all of her family. Um, remarkably dignified statement that she gave and uh, yeah we obviously have a very close relationship with the family so uh, we're very upset to hear the news but uh, 
uh, hopefully everything goes well. So that's Gareth Southgate there. Big game, of course, this evening against Brazil. Brazil aren't exactly in rude, rude uh, condition themselves. I mean, three defeats in a row, missing key players. Both their goalkeepers are out. I mean, you, know, you can only name one goalkeeper on the pitch, but their goalkeepers happen to be the Man, Man City goalkeeper and the Liverpool goalkeeper. Uh, England should win tonight, but they do have England. They, England do have in, injury worries of their own. At Harry, Harry Kane. Kane. Ankle problem. He collided with a goalpost last week, played yes. for Bayern Munich against uh, Darmstadt. You can break your leg doing that, can't yes, you? Yes, you can. It's happened uh, before in football. And so there's an opportunity, perhaps, we don't know who's going to get the nod, if it's going to be Brentford's Ivan Tony or Ollie Watkins of Aston Villa. One of them will get the, get the shirt tonight. And it's going to be an audition, effectively, uh, for who, who gets the job in the summer for the, for the Euros. We know Harry Kane will go. He is the England captain. And it's, a, it's up to the other two to state their claim this evening. And the one who gets the nod tonight will have a big chance. And, of course, the sh we talk about taking the shirt. There's been a huge controversy this week oh, as well. It'll be the first... It'll be the debut for, for the shirt, really, won't it? It will be. I mean, look, it's three centimetres by two centimetres. Come on, I know you think it's all a fuss about nothing, <laughs> but it's our flag. I know it is. I know. I know. You're absolutely right. And for those who say that it's... It, it, it's never really been on the shirt before the, the, the red, the traditional version. That's not true. It has been on a few times before in various different designs. Gareth Southgate said it's the three lions that matter more than the St George's Cross. The St George's Cross actually was only adopted by England fans, really, in preference for the Union Jag about 30-odd years ago. Yeah. So it's a relatively modern era type, type thing, post Euro 96, certainly. But as regards Nike, I mean, they pay four mil £400 million pounds over 12 years for these for this kit deal the prices are eye-watering i mean for an adult stadium shirts, that's the all singing, all dancing. The, is, that, the, is that the same as the players were? It's absolutely the same. Yeah, it might have some livery on it as well. That's different. A relatively recent thing. It's a marketing thing. 125 quid for that. <laughs> uh, for the stadium shirt, which you can get off the peg, 65 pounds. Uh, and for children, that same shirt is 55. And if they want the stadium version, which we talked about a moment ago, 120 pounds for that. And don't forget, there's no VAT on children's clothing either. It's a rip-off, It is it? indeed, yeah. yeah. Um, Football's all about money, isn't it? No, it, it is, is yeah. It is, it is. All right, Aidan, for now, thank you very much. We will see you a little bit later Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Um, but we've got Rafe Heldel Mancou and Stephanie Tetchy heading this way very, very shortly to talk about Princess of Wales. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Can the Church of England not spend their money as they wish? The Church of England can do amazing things for this country and for the world. And I'm not sure why it's chosen to focus on this specific issue. You know, one of the causes that I've always thought the church was very good at were things called almshouses, which were basically houses that would be built on church estates for the needy. Not only did they want to spend £100 million on this fund, that they wanted to spend £1 billion on reparations as well. But why not spend... 100 million or a billion pounds on a new generation of almshouses as opposed to just helping one group of people, black British people, why not just help all people in need? Alex? Well, I, I just don't understand what the Church of England is trying to do. It's on its deathbed. Congregations have, have reduced. Reduced. I mean, deathbed is maybe a I mean, well, <laughs> if we look over 20 years, it's dramatically lower than it used to be. And, and, and a lot of criticism from actual Christians come from the, the values that the Church of England are now propagating. And Justin Welby has a lot to answer for because, you know, not only are we seeing in the news this mass conversion of illegal immigrants to a gay mass system in the UK, but now we're seeing them spending money... And, and as Albie actually pointed out correctly, it, it, in, in, a, in a way that doesn't really benefit broader society, it benefits a very small group of people. So I, I just don't know where it's going to end. This committee has also said one million is not enough. It's 100 million, sorry. Um, it's, the, the church commissioners are now hoping to, for a target of one billion. I mean, I mean it's, it's, a... it's work nonsense, isn't it? You could make the argument that this is charity. Austin Welby's job is to be a virtue, should, virtue should, signaler, well, is it charity not? charity discriminate? I mean, that's what he's saying. We're only going to give this to people from a specific skin colour or background. I don't think that's a, a very Christian of them. Join me, Camilla Tomini, every Sunday at 9.30 when I'll be interviewing the key players in British politics and taking them to task. And this report basically says that he's not fit to stand trial. With an upcoming election looming over Westminster, now is the time for clear, honest answers. I agree. And that's precisely what I'll get. Is he indecisive? 
incompetent? That's the Camilla Tomini Show at 9.30 every Sunday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's election channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the People's Channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Time for the newspapers at 8.47, and we'll start with The Guardian. It has... Well, they've all got the Princess of Wales on the front, actually. Um, the news that, in The Guardian, she's undertaking chemotherapy. And the Mail quotes Princess Catherine saying, I am well and getting stronger every day. I'm going to be OK. The Times leads with the diagnosis as well, and that now familiar picture. Kate reveals cancer shock is the headline on the front of the Mirror. And The Express tells of Catherine's personal shock at her diagnosis. Well, it is the, the biggest um, concern for everybody, I think, at the moment. Mm. With us now, mm. Royal Broadcaster Rafe hayden Manku and showbiz reporter Stephanie Tetchy. Right, what do we look for mm. first? It's, it's Stephanie, I, I mean, it's just been... It's incredible, actually, yeah. the coverage in the press and the fact that everybody, everywhere you go at the moment, you must have he, been through this last night, he, everybody just wants to talk about it. Definitely. I think in most newsrooms, the royal family and over the past few months, that is what has been dominating all of our editorial meetings. But yesterday, there was just that tone. It was like when the Queen died, there was that day of just, like, feeling tension and just waiting to hear what Catherine has to say. But I think, you know, most editors are breathing a sigh of relief now because, you know, over the past few days, we've had to fill our front pages with either talking about stupid conspiracy theories or having a picture of Kate out and about, you know, just drip-feeding the public on this stuff. So now <sighs> it's actually come from Kate. The whole public can be on the same page as the royal family, which is refreshing. Do you, do you think, Rafe, it puts... It puts to bed some of the nastiness. Sandy's been in touch. Hi, Sandy. Who says, I'm so glad to feel I'm part of the GB News family who've been so caring and not indulged in the awful social media hounding of our princess. She's given so much of herself to all of us and she, in ill health, was not given a moment's peace. Absolutely right. And I hope that all those who contributed to that uh, terrible period we've had over the last few weeks does feel genuinely ashamed. And it's not just social media influencers, mm. you know? I was saying from the outset on the media, leave the Princess of Wales alone. And instead, we've had from, you know, quite respectable news channels and elsewhere in America and so mm. forth, the most outrageous stuff, John Oliver, who has you know, uh, yeah. hosts a chat show in, in America, the Stephen, Stephen Colbert, another late-night talk show. I hope they're all hanging their sheds in, in, in shame. And sort of feverish speculation and these wild conspiracy theories have really brought to my mind just the worst excesses of the Diana years. We have, we've just, yeah. exactly. we've just gone yeah. through exactly yeah. that sort of and period. Can you imagine mm. how frightening that must have been for William? Yeah. Um, to sort of almost see that sort of frenzy yes. happening again. Definitely. I have been thinking about Prince William a lot and just how, through all of this, he still managed to keep up with public appearances, knowing that's going on with his family life, and still being able to maintain somewhat a positive relationship with the press as well, despite what he's gone through in his past. Like, I was interviewing Ingrid Seward earlier this week, and she said the same thing. She said, it reminds me of the Di Diana era, and it's kind of scary that almost 20 years on, or over 20 years on, that nothing really has been learnt here. No. Think... Well, certainly, I mean, perhaps in the UK, but certainly not in the States. Well, that's, you know, the difference was, back then, it was mm -hmm. the British media who were fueling all of this. Mm -hmm. Now it's places like TMZ and these yeah. American channels and network. That's been a bit of a difference. But, you know, we have to say, the British media don't, you know, don't emerge from this with their, their heads no, yeah. held high what to a great... What frightens me is that um, we thought the British media particularly yeah. had agreed to sort of uh, uh, treat the royal family with some degree of dignity. Mm. Um, but the... the, the 
th the vile things that are being said on social media seem to be guiding the mainstream press towards what they want to talk about. Because well, it's almost too much to ignore, though. That's well, the that's thing. The that was how big it got. It's like that's how the power of social media is now. It's almost like it does drip free to what makes the newspapers now because you can't ignore it. And then it gathers strength when you get more people who are quite influential, whether it's an influential presenter or influencer, giving more weight behind it. And the, and the other big difference, of course, is that we're now in a very different media landscape. We're in the world of 24-hour rolling news, which we weren't in the 1990s. And, we, and now it's no longer just newspapers. There are, every mm -hmm. newspaper has a website, and there's always a demand for more and more content. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the, you, people are just desperate to put stuff online, and that's why you're getting more attention mm -hmm. given to in the past, which were people who were simply cranks who would have been ignored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, amidst all of this furore, she's come out, she's told us what's going on, there's as much detail as she wishes to. But finishing it all off, Rafe, and it really struck me last night, with actually a message of support to others. And I think that was absolutely profound. Yeah, it was a magnificent speech that she delivered. It was courageous in terms of her own condition, but it was also very caring. And it's, mm. it really reminded me exactly of the King's own speech. You know, when he, mm. Well, not but his message, where he actually encouraged other men. And we know that there was a huge increase in the number of searches online for prostate cancer mm -hmm. and so forth. And so we can only hope that some good does come out, mm -hmm. out of all of this. And I think it's a lot of people who are suffering from cancer will take hope from the fact that the Princess of Wales has said that. And also, of course, that she's so optimistic about her future because, of course, we have to say, you know, the word chemotherapy for people of a certain generation, myself included, mm -hmm. has very, very bad connotations. Yes, yes. But it's actually an umbrella term for any drug treatment that kills cancer cells. Mm -hmm. And it can be the traditional way of having intravenous infusions, mm -hmm. but it can also be far less intrusive things like simply taking tablets at home. It's mm. a very different world to when cancer really was a death sentence. Yeah. Now it's not at all necessarily. And you mentioned anymore. the chemotherapy message there. One of the things he went to a great uh, extent of saying was that he had received and read mm. so many of these wonderful messages and cards from members of the public and that it mattered to him. It does. I think, you know, when you are facing a health battle, you've got two decisions. Either you go down the road where you want to be negative or you cling on to every piece of support, piece of love that you get. Happiness is good for the bones. Happiness is good for health. I know it sounds cheesy, but when mm, you're in that true. situation, that is what you need. It's all about your mindset. And that's what I loved what Kate said. It's all about her being on this road to recovery mentally, spiritually and physically. And of course, also, she needs this after the last few weeks when there have been so much negativity, so many silly media storms that must have grated on her mm. to know that actually the British public are behind her full, fully, I think, must surely lift her spirits. And anyone who wants to be negative now has, has got to have a nerve because, as she said, this is, <clears throat> for her, it's about getting better, mm. it's about protecting her children. Yes. And it's about privacy and time yeah. to heal and go through the process without the constant media intrusion. Which I found was interested in, in Harry and Meghan's statement that they put out. They did mention that word privacy and I mm. think, obviously, that's something they've always been trying to say that they needed and more than ever they actually realized this is what kate needs right now yeah well i did think it was interesting that well thank heavens they released a statement yeah. you can't knock them for that no it was well yeah. worded it was well worded mm. um right thank you both we'll see you a little bit later on right now let's catch up with the weather here's alex deacon a brighter outlook with box solar sponsors of weather on gb news Morning, welcome to your latest weather update from the Met Office for GB News. Pretty chilly out there this morning and a colder feel all weekend. Heavy downpours today for most of us. Tomorrow looks a better bet for a drier and a brighter day. There's some sunshine to be had this morning, but the cloud is bubbling up pretty quickly and we'll see showers become fairly widespread by late morning. Heavy downpours, some hail already in places and further thunderstorms are possible. More snow on the hills across Scotland and even the high parts of northern England, parts of the Pennines could see further snow showers as well. There will be some sunshine, but there's a brisk and cold wind. These are the top temperatures. Most of this week we've been in the mid-teens across the south, single digits for most of us at best today. Still quite a few of those showers around this evening, still very gusty, particularly so in the far northeast where the showers just keep on coming. More snow on the hills here through the night. Elsewhere it does turn a little bit drier and there'll be some decent clear spells. 
Again, it will turn pretty chilly, temperatures well down into single figures, but that breeze should stop too much in the way of frost. A cold start though to Sunday, but overall, a brighter, drier day tomorrow. Not completely dry, there'll still be a few showers, particularly North Wales, maybe some feeding down through the Cheshire Gap, a few over eastern England and still some over northern Scotland. Still quite blustery along those eastern coasts as well, but elsewhere the wind's lighter, many places will be dry, and with those lighter winds it'll feel just a touch warmer as well. Goodbye. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. There's still time to win our giveaway packed with seasonal essentials. First, there's an incredible £12,345 in tax-free cash to be won. Cash to make your bank account bloom. Plus a spring shopping spree with £500 in shopping vouchers to spend in the store of your choice. And finally, a garden gadget package including a handheld games console, a portable smart speaker and a pizza oven. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,300 £145 in tax free cash, text GB Win to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5 pm on Friday, the 29th of March. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. Headliners, tomorrow's papers tonight, every night from 11pm. Welcome back to Headliners and Paul, we're going to get straight into Monday's mail for some good old-fashioned traditional mail breastfeeding. Yeah. Uh, to answer the question, what is the latest woke hell, Josh? Uh, Rao, as hospitals say, hormone-filled milk from trans women who were born male is just as good for a baby as the real thing. It's possible for men, if they pump themselves full of oestrogen, to grow larger breast tissue. And they often do... If or you just eat lots of burgers. But yeah, or... Yeah. <laughs> Easy bit, eh? Um, but... And once you've done that, it is, it is actually then possible to express or lactate some... A liquid. A liquid, OK? If to that liquid you then add another load of pills, medication, chemicals, whatever, that lactation juice can be fed to a baby. We don't really... This is not for the sake of the baby. The baby has no benefits from this whatsoever. The studies are very weak on it. Um, it's a bit worrying because, you know, when ho hospitals started indulging in, in homeopathy and having, a, you know, the NHS had homeo yeah. homeopathic um, hospitals, that was worrying because they're supposed to be a trusted authority. And before saying something like this, there should be an awful lot of study done. I want to show you this hospital. This is... Whether it's this, necessary. Yeah, let's do. Hospital Sussex NHS Foundation Trust. That's who it is. And they have written one of the stupidest sentences I have read God, just aloud read in the two years that I've been <laughs> privileged to do this show. It says, the term human milk is meant to be neutral and not gender biased. <laughs> yep. Wow. Yep. That's incredible. <laughs> yep. Oh, my God, we're laughing at you. I mean, and as someone says here, babies are not props. And that's the yeah. scary thing. And no. when it's not when we're not focusing primarily on the health of a baby. No, but the uh, the, the, the feeling of a person doing it yeah. rather than it's, it's a bit of an odd way to go, isn't it? So. Good morning to you. It's nine o'clock, Saturday, the twenty third of March. Today, the world rallies around the Princess of Wales after devastating news of her cancer diagnosis. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. I'm live from Windsor where the Princess recorded that courageous video message on Wednesday. I'll be bringing you the latest reaction and analysis throughout the morning. And overnight there's been an outpouring of love for the nation's favourite royal. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak commends Princess Kate's tremendous bravery and her brother James poignantly says, we will climb this mountain with you, Kate. We're also looking this morning at the road to recovery for the Princess of Wales with the help of top doctors 
and oncologists. Chemotherapy is not great to have. There's no doubt that despite the fact that we now control the sickness you get with it and various other side effects, it really tires you out. Good morning. We'll be hearing from England manager Gareth Southgate, who was among the well-wishers last night following that news from the Princess of Wales. England, of course, faced Brazil in a friendly at Wembley this evening. Colder out there today. Not quite the case of winter returning, but definitely a drop in temperatures. Lots of heavy showers around today as well. Tomorrow, though, looks drier and brighter. Join me later for a full forecast. Morning to you. I'm Stephen Dixon. And I'm Anne Diamond, and this is Breakfast on GB News. Uh, the country has really been touched by this. Mm. Um, as you say, it's across all the papers this morning, every single front page. But also, I mean, your thoughts coming through, so many of them. Um, Ronald, for example, hi, Ronald, says, so sad to hear of the cancer diagnosis of the princess. She's an inspiration to us all, as she does an enormous and valuable uh, job. We wish her and her father-in-law, our king, a speedy recovery. Her speech was brave and dignified. It really was, yeah. Mm. Tom says, my Jacqueline had stage four cancer oh. when our children were five, three and one. She was unable to look after her own children and was couldn't even lift her baby Gregory up. But she got through it against all the odds. And I think that has to be the message of this morning. It's certainly the message that Catherine wanted to convey. Yes. Is that it, a, a cancer diagnosis isn't necessarily the death sentence it used to be. Mm. Um, and so many people survive it, beat it, for many, 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 many years. Oh, um, they, are, they go on to live a, a cancer-free life. Um, and that is, of course, what we hope for Catherine. And I'm sure she said it's true. She said, I am well and I'm going to be OK. Mm. Marion says, Stephen and Anne, the tears are rolling down my face as I write this. I'm so upset um, for Princess Catherine, our most wonderful, brave, extraordinary princess. She is going to be our Queen of Hearts. We love her dearly, and I will be praying for her. I'm still shocked. Mm. It, it really was a shock mm. last night uh, when the C word was mentioned. Um, it was not what I was expecting, mm. and I don't think it's what any of us were expecting, but even so, she managed to to do it in, in a positive way, in a way, especially what she said at the end of her video message. Let's have a look. I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment. But most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be OK. As I've said to them, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body and spirits. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too, as is the love, support and kindness that has been shown by so many of you. It means so much to us both. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. 
It's quite something, mm. uh, actually. Really quite remarkable. Let's see what our royal correspondent, Cameron Walker, makes of it all. He's down in Windsor, where that message was recorded earlier this week. Uh, and again, Cameron, I will say, just struck by the fact that she turns that whole message around to say, I'm supporting those people across the country who have cancer as well. Yeah, despite clearly such a shock for her, Stephen, she chose to end her very personal message by uh, thinking of others who are going through similar things to herself. It's incredibly rare for a member of the royal family to talk about their private uh, medical details quite so intimately, directly speaking to the British public in the form of a video message. Usually something like this would be uh, in the form of a palace statement or a spokesperson speaking on the member of the royal family's behalf. But no, the princess chose to personally speak to the British public last night and since then there has been an absolute outpouring of of uh, support from the British public. GB News viewers and listeners have been obviously speaking to you all morning and last night when we broke the news, many of them were emailing in saying they were in tears by the news that the Princess of Wales is, has been diagnosed with cancer and is, going, uh, is undergoing preventative chemotherapy uh, for that. It's clearly been a lot to take in for her. It's been a lot to take in for Prince William because his father and his wife have both been diagnosed with cancer and he is now having to balance looking after his wife and three young children, as well as his duties as future king and heir apparent as well. But the priority for the Prince and Princess of Wales is and always has been their children, and they very much want to protect their children uh, at this time. Uh, they took their time to tell their children in the right way for them, bearing in mind Prince George is 10, Princess Charlotte is 8, and Prince Louis is 5. All three of them are now on their Easter break, which is why the princess decided last night was the right time to release this statement to the world, because both the prince and princess and their children can retreat to the privacy privacy of their own home in Windsor uh, or indeed in Norfolk as well. His Majesty the King spokesperson uh, delivered a statement last night saying that the King is proud of his beloved daughter-in-law for her courage. James Middleton, Kate's younger brother, has also released an Instagram uh, picture, a lovely photograph of him and Catherine as children and said, over the years we have climbed many mountains together as a family. We will climb this one with you too. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have also uh, released a very short statement saying we wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope they are able to do so privately and in peace. Now, of course, there has been intense interest about the Princess of Wales over the last few months. Unfounded, unfair conspiracy theories have been springing up online and in the princess's own words she says we now need some time space and privacy to complete treatment she is 42 years old she will be receiving the best medical care possible in this country we, she is not expected to be seen uh, at the easter sunday service in st george's chapel in windsor behind me next week neither is prince william or the children they're putting family first and focusing on the princess's recovery at this difficult time OK, Cameron, thanks very much indeed. OK, so let's join royal commentator Jenny Bond now. Um, Jenny, it's good to see you. Hello. Um, what, did you, what were your thoughts when you saw that, um, that video come up with a very dignified, um, a very competent, I mean, a very um, good performance um, from the princess? But my goodness, didn't she look frail? Do you think she should have done that? Um, well, I agree with you. And she was she was so dignified. And she she showed such courage. Um, and should she have done it? Well, you know, I feel I'm afraid to say that we society um, have probably forced her into that position, um, forced her in that position by uh, giving the oxygen of publicity to the frenzy on social media. What a cesspit that has proved to be. Uh, these internet trolls who peddled absurd, vicious uh, theories and rumours uh, about her. And then the mainstream media almost got led by the nose, I think, in, in talking about that frenzy on social media. And it all added up to a huge amount of pain and hurt for her and backed her, in, her into a corner where whatever she did or, or said wasn't going to be believed. And so she, I think, felt obliged to make this video recording, which she did 
to perfection. Um, and of course, the result is an outpouring of uh, goodwill towards her. But what a lot of pain we've had to go through, she has had to go through um, in, the, in the months that have gone by because of what's been said in the internet. Do you, do you think um, some of the speculation, well, it's not going to be speculation moving forward, is it? But the fact that it is likely we won't see her for quite a few months now, it's, it opens up that vacuum again. You've got to hope that people just leave it alone until she makes her return. But do you think that will happen? Do you know, if it doesn't happen, then I think we as a society need to look at ourselves and give ourselves a very big talking to. Uh, of course, she must have that privacy now. Um, it, it takes me back to uh, Diana, the former Princess of Wales, when she stood up um, at the time when her marriage was breaking down and she was mentally very, very fragile. She needed time out from her public role. And she stood there and surprised the world by saying, I need time and space. The very words that uh, this Princess of Wales has called for. Did we listen to Diana? No, I don't think we did. Have we learned anything? It would seem to be not. Uh, I mean, what's gone on in, on in the internet uh, wasn't around in Diana's time. God forbid she should have been subjected to that same pain. Um, so I think that uh, we have to give her the privacy now that she has so charmingly asked for. Mm. What is it with us? Why are we so obsessed with princesses of Wales when you think of it? I mean, the king, he is the king. He's got cancer. And yet it, this sort of crazy frenzy that we've just seen in the media hasn't happened around him, but it has around her. No, I suppose she is the star, really, of the, of the royal family. She has the, the glamour. She has the it factor um, and the X factor. And people want to know. And we live in a different world now, don't we, where people think they have a right to know absolutely everything. Um, the king has chosen to be uh, a little more public from the start, but um, she wanted her privacy. People are different. You know, some people are very private about their health, and I think Catherine is one of those. But in all of this, if you, as you've been saying, at the heart of this are these three young children who mean the world to William and Catherine. Um, and just saying the word William, you think of what he has been going through, criticised for not turning up at ex-King Constantine's uh, memorial service. Well, now we know why, um, criticised for not doing enough and, and absenting himself for putting his family first. Well, good for him. What mm. a lot he's had to bear. His mother died in a car crash. His brother is estranged. His father has cancer. And now his wife has cancer. I mean, that is one heck of a burden for him. Yeah, it certainly is. Jenny, thanks very much indeed. Well, joining us in the studio, a former royal correspondent, Nicholas Owen. And I know, Nicholas, you have, and it's, it's unusual... But you have almost a slight positive spin on this. Well, yes, I do feel very positive about it. Just to pick up one point there about, uh, as you rightly say, although there was a lot of interest in the, in the king and so on and feeling for him, so much more with the princess. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that, of course, she is 42 years old. You tend to think of cancer and very serious illnesses coming for people much older. Uh, the king just a, a little younger than myself, but uh, not so surprising. This is a wake-up, a, a reminder, is it not, that cancer comes along at all stages <laughs> and we are all vulnerable. We, 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 none of us are, 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 are promised a, a, a life right to the full, right to the end. It can strike anywhere. And to me, I, I do feel it's a great day in, in, in its important respect that the princess has reached out, if you like, I don't know a modern expression, but she has said to every Everybody. Listen, yeah, I've got it. it we're all going to have to deal with, with this, either ourselves or members of our family. One person in three going to have cancer at some stage of their lives. Uh, and, and, and there is great hope. There's terrific medical advances now. So uh, it, it's, uh, it, I thought she did a tremendous job of making people who are either got it now, or relatives have got <coughs> it, have been through it lately, perhaps even bereaved recently, mm -hmm. uh, make them realise that it's a journey that... Oh, another horrible expression I hate, but a journey that so many of us are going to be on one way and another. That's and she's done it in such a, 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 
a, a lovely, straightforward way. You're right, she does look frail, she does look pale. I'm not surprised she's been well, through so this awful... No, thing. it's only a few weeks since her yeah, surgery. Yeah, yeah. And then all those horrible, but, fantastic trolls and all those horrible social media things, that would make... But, make you know, if I, if I were her mum, if I were her mum, I would have said to her, you don't have to do this, Catherine. You really don't. You don't look strong enough. Maybe you're not strong enough. And Catherine probably would have said, I do, I do have to do this yeah. because mm. of the situation surrounding me. Yeah. But mm. for heaven's sake, we have to leave her alone now, don't we? Well, I, th uh, uh, I say leave her alone. I, I think I said earlier, we this is not going away. This is just the start mm. of it, really. There's going to be endless attention. How is she getting on? How is she doing? And so on. I mean, the, the appeal for privacy, we all feel that, oh, yes, let's hope. But mm, it's not going to mm. really be like that, I'm afraid. Except, uh, well, except if she, st I mean, if she <clears throat> physically stays out of the spotlight to where we can't get to her... <laughs> Then we'll have to leave her alone. Let's yeah. help me do that. Yes, well, I wish I see, and I wish I could sort of agree with you. But the, the world we live in that just seems to stir up some of this stuff, yeah. doesn't it? Makes it even worse. But that's it's very difficult for them. Very but, difficult. But that's where we need to learn, doesn't it? I mean, so many people have been in touch on that because a lot of this is driven by social media. Hmm. Of course, right? yes. Um, Alison says, "I want to express my well wishes to, to Catherine," um, and says some lovely things about the support for her and the family. Which is, I hope the nasty trolls who said horrific things about her hold their heads in shame and those celebrities who use their platforms to say disgusting things should now apologise to her and offer support. Yes. And that's... Well, we, we can't change the internet, but actually some people could lead from the front on that, couldn't they? That, well, they could. I mean, I don't think you're going to ch change human nature, sadly. I think people are always going to... A bit, fascinated with the royals as people are. Uh, that, that this not going to go away. People are not going to just suddenly say, oh, dear, oh dear yes, I, I, haven't I been appalling? Sadly, this is the world that they deal with. And, and the royals have recognised the fact the only real way to deal with these things is to be open about it. Mm. I'm afraid that's the. the but she has every right pay. not to be too open about it. Yeah, well, she's she, she said her piece. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure she won't be saying very Any much more. Any more? No, a, she mustn't for a, for a, for a long time. But um, my point is, attention to it will not go away. We can't just expect that that the world is going to turn its back and, and move on. Mm. Uh, they're going to they're going to want to know every every step and and. That's the reality. And I, and I wonder about Prince William in all this. We've, we've talked about him a lot this morning. Um, he's going to be having a reduced schedule, one would imagine, during the course of the next few months. But I think when, when this is resolved, you know, end of the year, whenever it might be, that's when it's going to hit him. Yes. I think that's when everyone's expecting them to be back in the spotlight. Yes. I think that's when he's going to actually need a proper break. Yes, <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. But I, I, I can't imagine William's going to be doing too much for quite a long time. I mean, it, it much better. Let, let's let's give them that break at least. Mm. Let's not expect him to be hopping about doing a lots of things. That that would be crazy, wouldn't it? Now's the time for Edward and Sophie maybe to come forward well, because they... they're very very good. Oh, they are excellent. They are, they are and brilliant. they've been doing a lot, a yes, great deal, a great deal, mm. a great deal. And there is the prince. Royal as well, of yes, course. Yes, he's wonderful, of course. Uh, very and, and, and we've seen the beginnings of the emergence of uh, Princess Beatrice, haven't we? Yes, indeed, yes, yes. Which, Another generation coming mm. up on the on the outside. Yeah. Which actually, maybe maybe yeah. this is her time to step forward yeah. as well and yeah. start yeah. pulling away and as far as that goes. Is it conceivable that it could lead to some sort of... Oh, I know what you're going to say. ..between... Um, William and Harry. ..California and uh, this country, yes. It would be nice to think so, wouldn't what it? What did you think of the statement they released? I thought it was terse, let's put it that way. Um, but if it had been any more gushing, we would mm. be criticising it. Well... We? We'd be saying, yeah. how dare he say he's sending his love when what he's sent in the past hasn't been so lovely. Yeah, I'm not sure the word love... Peer, did it? Oh, no, no, it didn't. So. no, it didn't. No, quite. Um, uh, it would just be nice to think that it might be, uh, might lead to a bit, a uh, bit more. Uh, well, a closeness perhaps is, is is going a bit far. But it would be. But it will nice. have been a shock to them as well, won't it? Oh yes, no I doubt, mean, no doubt. It really will have been it, mm. not something they would have been expecting at all either. Yeah. No. And let's not forget in all this, there is the king still. I know, away and in the Camilla. Uh, yep. Yes, we, it, it, it's interesting, actually. Katie Nichol wrote Camilla last hour, um, and I hadn't even really thought of that, which is which I'm shocked at myself in a way for thinking we've we've not really discussed what Camilla is going through with her husband, mm. never mind her daughter-in-law. Yes, yes, yes. It's a, uh, 
It's a pretty ill-starred family just at the moment, isn't it? It so brings it home to us, I think, how much of a just a family they are as well. Mm. Um, and here we have a situation where we've got a family of human beings who are suddenly, suddenly vulnerable. They've been, you know, on their thrones, they've been in the spotlight. Mm. Suddenly they're as vulnerable as you and I. Exactly. And, and talking, that, that part where the, the princess talked about the need to uh, tell her children what is going on mm. in a way that they will understand. I can't remember the exact words. I thought it was put very, very well indeed. All the words very, very carefully chosen in that statement. Of course, an awful lot mm. of people would have been involved let's be realistic about it, to make it right. But it does hit the mark very well, I think. That is the difficulty. We've talked about this earlier, haven't we? Mm -hmm. When you uh, suffer cancer yourself, personal experience tells me that you sort of get the word I use is cocooned. You kind of cope with it. It's extraordinary, but you do, mm -hmm. don't you? You say, oh, this is not what I planned at all. Damn it, done up, but I'm going to get on. It's the people around you. Mm. that are going to have the, the burden, uh, in the case of William, very obvious it's one. It's the people who the go... But the suffering, the suffering yeah, comes it's the, around. When you tell them the news, they go white. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And you have to do it again and again and again to each member of the family. And they cry. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. It's, a, it's a terrible thing to have so to go well. through. I remember mm. so well. Mm. Right, Nicholas, good to see you this morning. Thank you very much indeed. Good yeah, to be thank here. Thank you. Good to be here. It is good to be here because I think there is such <laughs> a feeling of warmth towards Catherine at the moment. And yes. Charles and, and the rest of them. Um, and that feeling of warmth is coming from you at home, and it's brilliant. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Um, all of you just just saying how much you're, you're sending your love and best wishes and... Oh, can I read out this one from Annette? Because it's, a, oh, it's yes. a message for everybody too. She says, in light of Princess Catherine's statement last night, I wish her well and I hope she gets better soon. However, I have to say that if you find anything strange suddenly appearing or happening to your body, get it checked out. My symptom was that my mouth hurt while I yawned late at night. Oh. And then one of my glands was raised, similar to, like, when you're having a cold. I went to my GP and I was diagnosed with tonsil cancer. Oh. Twelve years ago, but I'm OK. My thoughts and best wishes to the princess. I hadn't even heard of that. No. That's why yeah. that's an important message, I think. Yeah. Get checked out. I think you sometimes you're almost... Oh, if you can get an appointment, you're, oh, um, yes. you're almost a bit embarrassed to say, oh, it just hurts when I, but it hurts when I yawn. Yeah, isn't that... You think it'd be a bit... Extraordinary. Of a ...daft thing to go to the doctors within yeah. a way, but clearly not. You've got, to, you've got to get all these little bits and bobs checked out um, and then take the right action. There you go. Good message from uh, Annette. Annette, on that one. yeah, thank you. OK, it's 23 minutes past nine. Let's have a look at some of the other stories uh, that are going on this morning. And the, a US official has confirmed that Islamic State were responsible for a shooting at a concert in Moscow last night. Four people believed to be directly involved have been arrested. Russian authorities say at least 93 people have been killed and more than 100 injured. And in the last 20 minutes, Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron has condemned the attack, offering the UK's heartfelt condolences and saying nothing can ever justify such horrific violence. Donald Trump set to return to the stock market with the former president's social media platform to become a publicly listed company. He's scrambling to pay his £365 million fraud fine by putting Truth Social on the stock market, it could generate billions in profit. And Ireland's High Court has ruled that Britain is no longer a safe place for asylum seekers because of the threat of deportation to Rwanda. A judge found in favour of two migrants who argued that a return to the UK was unlawful because the UK is not a safe third country for asylum seekers. I think that's a very interesting story, actually. There's going to be some repercussions for that. It's a judge mm -hmm. making that decision. Yeah. Whether the Irish government will have anything to say about it or not, I don't know. It's extraordinary. It's a, it's a, it's a very tricky one. Considering we haven't got a Rwanda deportation policy No, it's yet. not much of a threat at the moment, you wouldn't think, but no. officially, according to a judge, it is. Oh, well, there you go. OK, well, you were hoping it was spring today, but it's uh, still blinking cold out there. Shall we find out what is due for us? Here's the weather with Alex Deakin. A brighter outlook with Bob Solar. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Morning, welcome to your latest weather update from the Met Office for GB News.
Pretty chilly out there this morning and a colder feel all weekend. Heavy downpours today for most of us. Tomorrow looks a better bet for a drier and a brighter day. There's some sunshine to be had this morning, but the cloud is bubbling up pretty quickly and we'll see showers become fairly widespread by late morning. Heavy downpours, some hail already in places and further thunderstorms are possible. More snow on the hills across Scotland and even the higher parts of northern England, parts of the Pennines could see further snow showers as well. There will be some sunshine, but there's a brisk and cold wind. These are the top temperatures. Most of this week, we've been in the mid-teens across the south, single digits for most of us at best today. Still quite a few of those showers around this evening, still very gusty, particularly so in the far northeast where the showers just keep on coming. More snow on the hills here through the night. Elsewhere, it does turn a little bit drier and there'll be some decent clear spells. Again, it will turn pretty chilly, temperatures well down into single figures, but that breeze should stop too much in the way of frost. A cold start though to Sunday, but overall a brighter, drier day tomorrow. Not completely dry, there'll still be a few showers, particularly North Wales, maybe some feeding down through the Cheshire Gap, a few over eastern England and still some over northern Scotland. Still quite blustery along those eastern coasts as well, but elsewhere the wind's lighter, many places will be dry, and with those lighter winds it'll feel just a touch warmer as well. Goodbye. That warm feeling inside from Box Boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. 9.26, time to congratulate Charles again. Mm. Charles from Stoke-on-Trent, who won the £18,000 Great British Giveaway. Yes, Spondulix. Well, they used to call it Spondulix. Spondulix, they did. Yeah. Well, it's going back a decade or two. Yeah. Well, we know Charles watches the programme and, and now he's got the prize money. In so, what? What's he got it in? In his grubby little hands. Oh, yes! That's what he said earlier, not me. Your words. Anyway, the point is, spend it wisely, Charles. Have fun, though. Here's the moment we told him he'd won big. Charles, I have some really good news for you. You're the winner of the Great British Giveaway. Oh, you. You've won eighteen thousand pounds. That's a big surprise. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Charles sounds like my father-in-law, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Flippy neck. It's not, though. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be after the uh, pizza I would be. I would be after something, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, Charles was a winner, as you heard, and you could be too with our latest giveaway. It's a shopping spree this time, plus a garden gadget bundle and, on top of all that, £12,345 in cash. Time is ticking on your chance to win the Great British Giveaway. There's a massive £12,345 in tax-free cash to spend however you like, along with £500 in shopping vouchers for your favourite store, a games console, a pizza oven and a portable Sonos smart speaker. And the best news? You could be our next big winner just like Phil. Didn't quite believe it and still can't. Uh, and if I can win it, anybody can win it. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,345 in tax-free cash, text GBWIN to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on Friday the 29th of March. Full terms and Privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. Yeah, best of luck to you. Still to come, do stick with us. We'll be getting a medical perspective on what's just been happening to the Princess of Wales. So don't, don't go away. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel.
I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria DiPiero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. Nana Queer, weekends from 3 p.m. Should we put tobacco star warnings on ultra processed foods? Boris Johnson is calling on the government to do this. In his Daily Mail column, the former Prime Minister says that people don't know what they're feeding their families and there's too many extra ingredients. That's why I'm asking, should we put tobacco star warnings on ultra processed food? Well, joining me now to discuss Steve Miller, former presenter of Fat Families, Helena Davidson, campaigner and policy expert at the Vegan Society. Right, so I'm going to start with you, Steve Miller. What do you think? Oh, I'm applauding Boris today. Good on you, mate. Uh, and the reason for that is we know that the research on uh, cigarette, you know, the warnings on cigarettes, I should say, when those warnings were visual, they worked very well. The second reason on a practical level is that we need to start stop looking and listening before we start, you know, grazing and putting mm. things in the trolley. And the third thing is that you know, these kind of signs or these warnings, I should say, are kind of hypnotic. They trigger the emotion. So they're much more likely to get people to think and, and maybe resist. Yeah, so the, at the Vegan Society, we're broadly in favour of increasing consumer knowledge um, when it comes to the nutri nutritional value of people's food. Um, but I think it's important to mention that ultra processed food isn't an issue that's exclusive to vegans. And whilst most meat alternatives will fall into the ultra processed food category, it largely depends on how we're going to look at how UPFs are going to be assessed because vegan um, alternatives that are fall under ultra processed foods, they're actually on average healthier than meat products or ultra processed foods that contain animal products. Really? So I think it depends on how we look at it. We might have to take a closer look at the nutritional profile of individual foods rather than the level of processing. Nine thirty-two. Good morning to you. Well, of course, we've been talking because what else could we talk about this morning? But the Princess of Wales' cancer diagnosis—it's on every single newspaper. But I tell you what, we're doing is we're we're talking about it because it is the news of the day. But what we're not being is intrusive. We're only talking about what she has told us. Yeah, what she wanted us all to know. Mm. Uh, well, earlier on, we spoke to the former chief of the World Health Organization's cancer programme, Professor Carol Sikora. When I began nearly 50 years ago in cancer, everybody got the same thing. Now, it's very personal. We look at all the data, the pathology, the imaging, uh, the biopsies from the operation, and then even more now, a molecular analysis, looking at genes, gene proteins, and other factors in the tumor in a very sophisticated way to predict the risk of it coming back. If the risk is very low, someone may just have surgery. If the risk is higher, we recommend chemotherapy, adjuvant chemotherapy. And that's probably what's happening. You know, we don't want to speculate where it's coming from or anything, but you know, for many different types of cancer, adjuvant chemotherapy it is of proven value. Trials over the last 20 years have really demonstrated benefit. And of course, the outcomes for everybody is much better if we tailor the treatment to the patient. I suppose this sort of chemotherapy is different for every medical case in front of you. Um, but what form might it take? And does it mean that that word preventive, which is the word she used, um, does that mean that the cancer has physically been removed? That's the most likely situation. And the chemotherapy is there just to prevent it coming back. And so, uh, you know, the, the outcome, the, the likely outlook is really quite good. I mean, you know, without all the details, it's difficult to make any meaningful statement on that. But, you know, chemotherapy is not great to have. There's no doubt that 
despite the fact that we now control the sickness you get with it and various other side effects, it really tires you out. And, you know, uh, it usually lasts four to six months, depending on the regimen used. So uh, I suspect you'll be out of action for a bit of time, and it's better to take it easy. I tell my patients, don't do anything the day after chemotherapy and take, cancel everything. Don't go to work, just sit at home, watch daytime TV, relax, see people, and, and get plenty of exercise and that's that keeps people going uh, just gentle exercise walking in a park or something like that um how important i know it, it might seem a strange question to ask a, a physician in a sense but how important is is a positive mental attitude in, in making very, a recovery from something like this it's a very interesting question Stephen, and there's been a lot of research on that do people with a positive attitude do better overall and it does seem to be the case. People that approach the, 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 whole, the, the whole problem with a positive, uh, you know, determined approach to beat it seem to do better. Uh, the difficulty is we're all different. And, you know, I think what this shows is that the royal family is no different than the rest of us from other families in that they have, you know, the difficulty of a cancer diagnosis amongst them, two, three cancer diagnoses. So I think the approach is to try and build people confidence in the ability to live. She mentioned the words body, mind and spirit. The body is dealt with by the chemotherapy, but the mind and spirit you have to do with other people and partly on your own, how you react psychologically to knowing that you have a, a potentially life-threatening disease. I see very positive actually there from Carol Sikora. Very positive. And he is a man who knows his stuff. Mm, he certainly does. He's to be one of the top oncologists probably in the world. Mm -hmm. um, still to come for you, Aidan's going to be back and he's telling us how the England football team honoured and paid their tribute, if you tribute the right Respect. word. Respects. Respects. I don't, I don't know. Know. To, to what she said. Yeah, yeah. that's next. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, every Sunday at 9.30 when I'll be interviewing the key players in British politics and taking them to task. And this report basically says that he's not fit to stand trial. With an upcoming election looming over Westminster, now is the time for clear, honest answers. I agree. And that's precisely what I'll get. Is he indecisive? Incompetent? That's the Camilla Tomini Show at 9.30 every Sunday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's election channel. Britain's Newsroom, weekday mornings from 9.30. Men's mental health, yeah. men are starting to talk a lot more. Yeah. You've been through a lot of stuff that uh, people don't know about. Yeah, I mean, um, the last few years for me have been very, very difficult. Um, people, don't, people see me on tour, performing, making music, um, but um, myself and my wife, um, you know, we went through... Um, two miscarriages, oh, um, wow. you know, and, you know, for us, that was a very devastating mm. course. time and very difficult to, to, to know how to kind of process those emotions. Mm. And I guess as a man, I, I did the thing of bottling up my emotions and where I feel comfortable to, to be able to express myself is in the studio, whereas, you know, she had obviously a different reaction to, you know, what happened to us because not only was it happening to her mentally, psychologically, but it was happening to her physically as well. And I think what something that she really would wanted to see from me was that sensitivity and that emotion. And I thought that as a man, being strong was trying to bottle up my emotions and just show her that, no, mm. you know, that I'm, I'm being strong for her. Mm. But actually being strong was 
is talking about it. Mm. And what's happened ever since I've started to talk about it is I've spoken to more men that have experienced baby loss. My wife forced out of me, you know, how do you feel? And I end up as a mess on the floor. I was exasperating, crying, yeah. almost inconsolable. She was just holding me in her arms um, as we cried together, and we cried together. Um, and I didn't realise I needed that release so badly. Like I said, I've been able to speak to other men, and 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 we've been able to cry together. And they've they shared their own experiences, which they did similar to me. But actually. You know, as men, I feel like that conversation and that sensitivity and being able to be mm. emotional together. Nine forty, morning to you. Aidan's got the sport for us today, and of course, this all overlaps with the Princess of Wales. Yes, without doubt. Last night, England held their press conference ahead of their game against Brazil. They're friendly at Wembley this evening. And that was at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Sorry, the Tottenham Hotspur Training Ground. I keep saying that. I've been getting that wrong. It's only the fourth time I've been on, isn't it? So yeah, well, see, I'm, I we'll get it right eventually. I will do, yeah, by tomorrow. So, Andy Walker, the head of comms, took Gareth Southgate into the media auditorium. And before there were any questions from the floor, he said, Gareth Southgate has something to say. Don't forget, Prince William is, of course, the, the FA chairman. And this is what he had to say. Clearly, we've just heard about the... Um, Princess of Wales and we just wanted to send our thoughts and best wishes to her and all of her family. Um, remarkably dignified statement that she gave and uh, yeah, we obviously have a very close relationship with the family so uh, we're very upset to hear the news but uh, uh, hopefully everything goes well. well. It's lovely that he said it. Yes, exactly, exactly and that tees England up for their game this evening. It's a glamour friendly, really, against uh, Brazil. A key injury, as Stephen mentioned in the last couple of hours, Harry Kane, an ankle injury. Uh -huh. He uh, bumped into a goalpost last week playing for Bayern Munich against uh, Darmstadt. But it's a real opportunity for either Ivan Tony, who had his eight month, eight month betting ban, or Ollie Watkins, who scored 16 goals and made 10 assists for Aston Villa this season. Only one, realistically, is going to be on the plane in the summer alongside Harry Kane in those positions. So whoever gets a nod tonight has a massive advantage getting there. I think Ollie Watkins will get the nod. That's my, that's my personal opinion. Another prediction, you can possibly bring him up. Hold me, ping, sorry, pull me up on that one tomorrow. Yeah. If I get it wrong. Well, we shall <laughs> see. We shall see. Mind you, are they all going to play with their collars turned up to get rid of that awful <laughs> cross on the back of their necks? I don't know. I, I, I think any, who are, any players tempted to do that, because there will be some who have strong feelings about it either way, I think the FA will clamp down on that. This is a major sponsorship deal. Uh, for Nike, apparently their share price dropped yesterday. Really? It did indeed, yeah, yeah. So even though they sold out the shirts. Sold out the shirts, yeah. I mean, the, the deal's worth four hundred million pounds over over twelve years. There are massive production costs in recalling the shirts. I don't think that's really an option. Well, the recall FA. them, but in terms of making any new ones. Yeah, well, that's that, again. It's, but it's still there's still major production costs with with that as well. And don't forget, I mean, the, cut, the money they've recouped so far from selling, I mean, let's have a, just remind ourselves of the prices, shall we? £125 for the all-singing, all-dancing stadium shirt for adults. Uh, for, for, these, for the one you get from a sports shop off the peg, 65 quid. And for children, that shirt is £55. And the stadium one, which is the one that they all, they, Nike probably know, and the FA know that the kids are going to want that mm -hmm. one, aren't they? Uh, £120 in a cost of living crisis make of that one. I you know work. exactly. Crazy, isn't it? And they've sold out. So, but I do, well, I do think I do think this bothered the wider public more than it did actually football for actual football fans. Mm. Maybe, really? maybe they have gone up in price though. And since since lockdown, we have kind of fallen in love with nostalgic football shirts. And you know, I think people realise if you buy them at source when they first come out, it saves you pay, paying a grand ten years down the line. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Buy me one, <laughs> and I'll let you know. What well, you're I not think. you're not getting the stadium one. No chance. No, no, no. I'd want the proper one. I'd have to wait. I'd have to wait because I sold out of it now, Stephen. Oh, well, you can put a pre-order in there. Yeah. There'll right. be more on sale. <laughs> I'll put it on expenses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, I shouldn't... Um, I, I, I'm not going to push Aidan. Aidan is actually very generous. Oh, and, he's, and he's already promised to bring soup in next weekend. Yes, and we may well need it. Yes, I think we might. I think um, you will. Especially the way I made it. It's, it's going it's to blow your taste buds. Yeah, you're apart. very good oh. at making soup. <laughs> oh, very good. Look forward to it. Aidan, thank you very much. Good to see you. Indeed. OK, well, stay with us, cos in a moment we'll have a look through the papers. And, of course, there's only one story in town and that's Prince Catherine's cancer diagnosis. Uh, we'll be talking all about that in just a couple of moments. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. 
So send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday. Now, reports suggest that Boris Johnson could make a general election comeback for the Tories, with the former Prime Minister expected to campaign for the Conservatives in Red Wall seats, although not standing one himself. Yes, he wants to take the fight to Keir Starmer. So, GB News East Midlands reporter Will Hollis has been in Bassett Law asking locals whether they want to see Boris make a comeback. I actually used to like Boris Johnson, but he let me down with COVID, and so therefore I, w I won't be voting Conservative anymore. I did do, but not anymore. Not for me and anybody else here, because from, all, from, from day one he's been a liar all along. Don't vote for him. Stick with Labour. I like Boris Johnson, to be honest with you, and I think it could do a boost for Conservatives. I've always been a Labour voter, Miss Enlard, but uh, no, I went to Conservative. Personally, not for me, no, no. He's, done, he's not done anything to make any arrangements to make this town better. When he was in charge of the Conservative Party, all he thought about was the upper class, not the working class, because he was telling everybody to stay at home during COVID, and what did he do? He had an house party. Well, there you go, the views of the people of Bassett Law, not well, so I mean, keen He was overall. telling people to stay at home. He did, there's no suggestion he didn't stay at home. Well, no, but I guess there's uh, mixed reviews on whether Boris Johnson to make a comeback. I guess the idea is that he'll appeal to Red Wall voters far more than Rishi Sunak. So if they can use him up there, then uh, maybe he'll help them out. And Although I think they want to get David Cameron to uh, campaign in the, uh, in the Blue Wall, in the Shires, because he goes down well there. Allies of Boris Johnson have been pouring cold water on this report, of course. Nadine Dorries tweeting earlier today that uh, Rishi and Boris actually haven't spoken in the last year. Yeah. Nine forty-seven. Uh, time to. Well, I was going to say see what's in the papers, but it's well, we know what's it's in only the papers. One story, really. It really is a one-story day. Royal broadcaster Rafe Heldel Manku and showbiz reporter Stephanie Tetchy are here. It is all about the Princess of Wales, and not surprising because not only was the news a shock, Rafe, but actually the way it was delivered was unique. It was dignified and it was warm. Yes, completely unprecedented. I mean, obviously shocking because we've always known the Princess of Wales to be in rude health. She hasn't really had any health issues apart from acute morning sickness during her pregnancies. We were told that this operation was going to be non-cancerous, which indeed it was. It was in the post-operative testing that they discovered all of this. So we are generally, like generally shocked. That, exactly like the King, actually. Spookily like the King. And yet, of course, and yet more of a reason that we all need to go and get ourselves checked and screened. And just as the King um, was hoping that his uh, coming forward would lead to men having their prostates checked and we saw a huge increase in searches for that on the internet. One can only hope that other people can take inspiration from this video too. But as you say, very unique. We know that the timing of this was done deliberately because it marked the end of the school term for, uh, for the three children and therefore they, they won't have to deal with media outside the school or children in school talking about things. So the timing of this was very clear as explained in the video, but the fact that the Princess of Wales recorded a video to camera, normally there's a press release issued mm. by Kensington Palace. This was uh, the Princess of Wales' way of saying, yes, I'm here, this is taken now, the flowers you can see behind me mm. show that this is a, a current modern video, and uh, I am speaking to you from my heart, saying this is what's happening to me, uh, speaking more openly than ever before, but also saying I need time to heal, mm -hmm. and this is a time for privacy. Yeah, I mean, the uniqueness of it is surely in the fact that 
that mm. when we see royals speak, yeah. they're either on a stage, yeah. you know, so they're in all of their finery and there's a reason they're there and they're being very positive and very lively, or when you see them out and about meeting yeah. people. Here we see a princess... Personal. ..being very mm. personal and looking very vulnerable. Yeah, and I think it's... I kind of feel sorry for the comms team, for the royals, because they faced so much scrutiny over the past few weeks where I think probably when it got to this video, it was just, let Kate talk. Forget the stage in anything. Mm. Let her speak her truth and what she's been going through because everything else that they've tried to do to help try to make the public feel a bit safe, knowing that Kate as well, unfortunately, has failed, where this... You cannot deny it. You cannot criticise it. It's a woman, it's a mother, it's a daughter, it's a sister speaking what she's going through. And most of us can relate to Kate in this video. And I think what's happened over the past few years, what I find annoying is when critics do not view the royals as human. Mm. They are human beings. And her talking about cancer, we can all relate through it because we've all either had a loved one who's gone through it. So I think this video was just Kate being natural and being herself. Self. What about the fact William... Uh, it's only struck me this morning that uh, you might have sort of expected William and Catherine to do the video together. The mm. fact she, What do you mean, the fact she did it absolutely on her own, Rafe? I think it's more powerful that way. This mm. is a personal, almost a one-to-one -one between uh, Catherine and, and the whole nation, and it's clearly her, her desired words were coming out of that. And I think, in a certain sense, uh, that's important because there's been so much focus on the Princess of Wales. Yeah. This is the Princess of Wales' struggle, and I think the way that this was done just really underlined that. But our thoughts must also be with Prince William, yeah. as they must be with Queen Camilla. Yeah. You know, when the King first spoke as Prince Charles of slimming down the monarchy, the vision was for there to be ten principal yeah. working royals. Fast forward a few years, Prince Andrew, yeah. Harry and Meghan went. Fast forward, you know, a couple more years now, and we now have the working roles down to just five. And of those, you know, Camilla and many of them are... In, I think the average age of the working royals is now 72 wow. years yeah. of yes. age. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very trying time for everyone, obviously for the King and for the Princess of Wales, but also for the other roles who have to now step up to the plate, including, let's remember, you know, the, the, uh, the Gloucesters and the uh, Kents yeah. are 80 and 90. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very trying time time for everyone, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that is the changing face of the royal family. Like, they're very much a family since... Queen Elizabeth died, they've been very much a family that's been in transition and trying to keep it afloat. And what I really respect about the royal family is always service and serving the public is always at the forefront of their minds, as Kate said in that video stuff yesterday. It's a job she loves doing, but at the same time, they are going to face these kind of hiccups and they're just going to have to find a way to keep it going, which they have. And that's why they need more public support and less of this controversy, which has been happening over the past few weeks. But isn't it fascinating how, in, in the wake of all of this, one thing which we're getting through in all the, the hundreds and hundreds of messages we've had today is the fact that people who either have had cancer or, in some cases, have terminal cancer that have got in touch this morning feel uplifted by, you know, almost held and supported by the Princess of Wales as a result of what she said. Absolute inspirational. I mean, we've had viewers with t tears in their eyes who've been actively crying about all this. And that's actually, you know, monarchy is the most human form of government because it's based on the family. And we all have our own families. And so we celebrate the highs of births and marriages and coronations, but we also feel the pain and the anguish. And we can all relate. Every single viewer has had cancer affect them in some way, either personally mm -hmm. or through their own family or social circle and uh, this is just the you know this is the uh, the public face of what we all have to yeah. live with mm. and you know obviously I come from more of the showbiz celebrity arena but I've always found with stories with public figures when they do open about their health battles it ends up becoming inspiring because it becomes like a collective experience where readers and their fans go on this journey with them mm. of wishing them back to health and being on this road to them. And also, it promotes awareness mm. in that sense. And most people do go through these battles, but they don't have a voice to it, speak about the, these the, things. I guess the difference with celebrities, because obviously celebrities often use issues like this, as serious as they are, yeah. as a PR vehicle. Yes. 
Right, and so people do literally go literally on that journey yeah. to recovery with them. Whereas obviously this isn't the case. No, Kate doesn't not. want PR. She wants to be left alone. Yeah, now. and it's sad, and this is what is sad about this situation, where the fact that she didn't have that space mm. to kind of handle this behind closed doors, she was almost forced in a way. For me, as I said, when I was watching that video, it was less about Kate, the princess, but more Kate, the mother, yeah. more Kate, the wife, and now she's going through this, and this is why she has yeah. to communicate this. But yeah. this is okay. what we have to remember is her message to her own children is she'll be OK yeah. and she will. We yeah. know she'll be too. Um, Rafe, Steph, thank you both thank you. very much indeed. Ellie and Ben are here next with Saturday Morning Live. A brighter outlook with Bob Solar and sponsors of weather on GB News. Morning, welcome to your latest weather update from the Met Office for GB News. Pretty chilly out there this morning and a colder feel all weekend. Heavy downpours today for most of us. Tomorrow looks a better bet for a drier and a brighter day. There's some sunshine to be had this morning, but the cloud is bubbling up pretty quickly and we'll see showers become fairly widespread by late morning. Heavy downpours, some hail already in places and further thunderstorms are possible. More snow on the hills across Scotland and even the high parts of northern England, parts of the Pennines could see further snow showers as well. There will be some sunshine, but there's a brisk and cold wind. These are the top temperatures. Most of this week, we've been in the mid-teens across the south, single digits for most of us at best today. Still quite a few of those showers around this evening, still very gusty, particularly so in the far northeast where the showers just keep on coming. More snow on the hills here through the night. Elsewhere, it does turn a little bit drier and there'll be some decent clear spells. Again, it will turn pretty chilly, temperatures well down into single figures, but that breeze should stop too much in the way of frost. A cold start though to Sunday, but overall a brighter, drier day tomorrow. Not completely dry, there'll still be a few showers, particularly North Wales, maybe some feeding down through the Cheshire Gap, a few over eastern England and still some over northern Scotland. Still quite blustery along those eastern coasts as well, but elsewhere the wind's lighter, many places will be dry, and with those lighter winds it'll feel just a touch warmer as well. Goodbye. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed boilers. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Time is ticking on your chance to win the Great British Giveaway. There's a massive £12,345 in tax-free cash to spend however you like, along with £500 in shopping vouchers for your favourite store, a games console, a pizza oven and a portable Sonos smart speaker. And the best news? You could be our next big winner just like Phil. Didn't quite believe it and still can't. Uh, and if I can win it, anybody can win it. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,345 in tax-free cash, text GBWIN to 84902. Text cost £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on Friday the 29th of March. Full terms and Privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. Tubes and Co. Weekdays from 6 p.m. You think this country needs new gas power stations?